Uh, all right. Yeah. Uh, yes. How are you? Uh, are you good? Good. Good. So uh, that's so amazing. I haven't done a call to to someone from the US before. So this is really it's all, it's all, it's, uh, indeed. Yeah, it's the first <laughs> well, time it's, I've. It... Uh, it's not. It's not anything that weird. I was. In fact, I was talking to a UK guy yesterday. It's not like you're calling Narnia or Mordor or something like that. In fact, I. I, I was joking with the guy yesterday. I go, you got to remember that. Really, we're just the ultimate spinoff from the UK. That yeah. that's all we really are. I mean, I, I joked about people. I go, look, when whenever I see like the Olympics, the medal count from all the different countries. I go, yeah. that's not what you should look at. Just look at the crown, right? You yeah. know, all everybody that's in the crown and then kind of throw in America just because, you know, <laughs> we're independent, but come on, are we really? So what, what school are we doing this for? Uh, okay, so this is, um, I'm going to be doing this uh, for my uh, University of Winchester oh. uh, in the UK. Um, so a lovely old university in, you know, what used to be the, the capital of the UK. Right. Um, and I um, edit and uh, write uh, an online magazine, um, which generally, um, you know, began actually life as, as a music magazine, and it was opened up more to the arts. And now it's sort of a lot of, um, you know, just generally... Um, by students, for the students, variety of subjects. Um, so, I mean, you know, normally I'm a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a music journalist, um, so it's, it's a bit new to me. I would uh, never pick up that you're a music <laughs> journalist from the longer hair and the Bowie shirt. I would not pick up on that. I know, how subtle. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, so, how, um, so how'd you get into this? How, how'd, you, uh, how'd, how'd you find me? Um, well, I mean, you know, I mean, I suppose the, the, the flat earth movement is something that, um, you know, I think even just because I'm 21, so obviously, admittedly, you know, 10 years ago, I probably wasn't as aware of just whatever was in the news as much. Um, but, you know, I think the flat earth movement is one of those things that, you know, 10 years ago, I didn't know about it. But increasingly, it's one of those movements that's kind of just gone from strength to strength and become more and more known. And um, I discovered you specifically through... Um, I think his name's uh, uh, James Buckley. He did um, he did a, an interview, I think, on a podcast. He's he's he's, he's quite weird. He's kind of most well known as being um, a particular character in a in a British sitcom. But he he right. did like um, a podcast. He did an interview with you, um, which I I watched uh, I suppose a number of years ago now, and yeah. I was just fascinated by um, by you and I guess sort of um, yeah what you believed. And it was just I kind of thought, oh well, you know, I'll send this guy an email and see if he's sure. not you know, Why so, not? Yeah. I, I know i i uh, say yes to just about everything that comes out of the uk i'm not yeah. i'm not kidding you if, if if there's a request that comes to the uk i jump on it to where because you never know when you're gonna when you're gonna do another one i mean i did one for um uh good morning britain that was oh, well, the, yeah. the mo my most intimidating one because that was piers morgan and it's like oh god yeah. not that guy yeah. Because, because you know, you see him, you see him tear apart people, right? And then all of a sudden, yeah. it's like, oh yeah, he wants to talk to you. I'm going, oh, it's a terrible <laughs> idea. It's really, really bad. Um, and then I did um, Russell Brand. Uh, oh wow! Yeah, that was a that was one of those late. That that's also another thing. When you're a big, when you're a big enough celebrity person, they can call you last minute. Meaning, yeah. it's like, oh, hey, can we call you in uh, five hours? I go, that'll be 3 a.m. my time. And they, and they go, so you'll do it, yeah? <laughs> it's like, yeah, I'll do it, fine. Um, and then the the probably the most interesting one was uh, I did, I went over I went over to the UK to do um, street activism because we had a van that was driving around all the, all the towns of, of uh, England. Well, not all the towns, obviously. And then went over to Europe, and then afterwards somebody caught wind of it, and I went over and did Philip and Holly. Oh wow! Yeah, that was yeah, fun. So, and yeah. yeah, it was like so. Yeah, I know. I'm totally in love with the UK. I have I have gotten <laughs> uh, to where I mean, it wasn't. It was you got to remember over here we have a channel called BBC America, yeah. which shows a lot of you know popular British shows, you know Downton Abbey and Doctor Who and and stuff like yeah. that. And I've always been a fan of, of British shows, but after I went over there a couple times and, and spent some time over there and then came to the States, I had a completely new appreciation for it. <laughs> Absolutely a new appreciation. And I get it. I get it. I, I understand why you call us the colonies still, you know, and, and why you do all you, why you look at America the way you do. I get that now. 
And... Yeah, it's um, it's uh, yeah. I suppose uh, in especially in, in recent years, I guess it's um, uh, there's a there's some a disillusion is probably the nice way to right. to put that with the with the right. states. <laughs> the, yeah, the, um, the states. But but <laughs> as I I said to the last guy, I said you know there's there's united this and people's this, but there's only one great, which is Great Britain. You know, well, that's true, yeah. so. <laughs> if that's you know the cross we have to bear. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, so um, just before I get into the questions, um, yeah. you know, being fully transparent, um, you know, it's not my um, I don't know the word is. It's not my intention. No, if, if any question I if you know say, I don't think there is anything that sounds offensive. If there's any question I ask that kind of sounds like it's against your beliefs, whatever, just no, say, no, 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 no. You can um, you can ask whatever you want. I've again remember I've been doing this for seven years now. So if, if you if if you can come up with an original question, I'll be impressed. But yeah. uh, <laughs> there's nothing off limits. You can you can take a shot. Like I've had I've had trolls come at me, and so don't. Well, yeah, I mean I, I mean yeah, I mean obviously um obviously I believe I guess what would be considered the kind of mainstream. You know I don't believe in in the flat earth movement, but right. you know I'm open minded and. At the end of the day, as long as it's not inciting utter harm, no at the end of the day, believe no, no, what you no, want. It's, it's fine. Seriously. You know, we, um, we can just roll with it. But, but uh, so, yeah, so the, so the first question, and it's it, it's quite a big question to, to open with, but um, I think uh, a lot of the time, um, you know, I think the flat earth movement in general, but especially with you, it's kind of reduced to just you believe the earth is flat. But from what I remember in terms of the interview um you did with uh james buckley was that there's there's a lot to it right so i guess somewhat briefly but also to elaborate if that makes any sense is what do you believe what what does the world look like to me what what is the what to me where do we live um and i'm gathering you you probably didn't see the netflix documentary um, is that the behind the curve? Yeah, did you see behind the curve? Uh, I have seen. Behind okay, perfect. Well, that'll give you that'll give you yes. some context. Yeah. So we because some of it will sound repetitive, but uh, but the beginning of that show, the reason why they used the beginning of that show, which was interesting, because that was some of the very first footage we shot, uh, and we you know we only do one take during a documentary. Um, you are not living in uh, on a tiny little rock covered in a very very small amount of water and even a smaller amount of smoke that's flying around an impossibly huge universe and you're not an accident you know you're not just left over from the big bang you are living in a building a giant building that is uh you know and again a planetarium a terrarium uh, 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 a hollywood soundstage that is so big that even our best and brightest didn't figure it out until almost 1960. And what we're talking about here is uh, a building, and inside that building is a giant saltwater pond. And inside that pond are a bunch of islands, which we would call the continents. And again, we had nothing to do with the, the construction of this place at all. Uh, whoever built it was way more uh, uh, powerful and older and sophisticated. There, so, you know, it, with engineering skills that are octaves above what we can do. And when we figured it out in 1960, and by that I mean the United States and the Soviet Union and a few other nations, but th those are the two big ones. Uh, the, the the decision was made, <clears throat> which was, do you tell the general public or not? And yeah. the the answer that I came up with was, no, no, you don't. Um, because it, it back then, <coughs> excuse me, the the information technology wasn't up up to snuff. You couldn't get the uh, the narrative out there fast enough. People forget that Roswell was only about fi thirteen years earlier, and that scared the hell out of a lot of people. Uh, people don't yeah. understand that the reason why the Pentagon walked back Roswell as fast as they did, and you know held up little pieces of sticks and foil. Yeah. It's like, oh yeah, this is actually what it was. It's like, what are you talking about? You took truckloads out of the desert, <laughs> you know, and and the farmer all of a sudden got all this new stuff, and he never talked to anybody ever again. Uh, um, but that when that freaks somebody out, you you realize in 1960, it's like, yeah, you know, the, the repercussions, and we may get into that. The repercussions are so huge, you you don't tell people. So yeah, you're you're living basically in a snow globe. Um, what's outside of that snow globe? Is there space? Why would you think there's space? 
because yeah. you know the space is the big programming um there in fact you're probably just sitting on a desk with a whole bunch of other snow globes and what's yeah. outside of this world you know we can get into it but that's that's the big thing you're you're living in a structure that has the illusion of space very much like the simulations we make today you know when when regardless of what you're playing i'm not going to say like minecraft but like fortnite or gta or whatever the other games are you're living in a world that's simulating a much, much bigger world, but you just don't know it. I mean, the the part that blows me away, because, you know, I come, I come from the gaming world. You know, I, I played video games for a living and was a video game producer, is that though all those games are perfectly tabletop flat. I mean, yeah, there's some hills and valleys and crap like that, but they're tabletop flat. And, yeah. it, and, and people it's like, what do you mean? I go, there's no curve built into those games. And it's like, why? Well, because no one would ever notice. So if they wouldn't notice there, why would they notice here? Why would yeah, you? Why would yeah. you? Why would you build the curve in? Anyway, sorry, I ramble. Go. What do you got? <laughs> uh, no, I mean, uh, so, so yeah, I mean, one of my questions was, I guess, yeah, if you know, if if, if we're in this kind of um, not simulation, as you say, but in this kind of snow globe, I guess one of my questions was, yeah, are there others? And I suppose you've already said that, um, yeah, you'd have no reason to believe there wouldn't be. Yeah, why? Why would you? Why would you be? Why would it be a one-off? If you're going to create a sandbox like this, because this is really what we're talking about here. Um, like my, I'll, I'll, I jump back and forth between video games every once in a while. Um, Minecraft is considered a sandbox editor. That's really all it is. It's yeah. not. It's not even really a game. It's it's an editor. So. And, and there's all sorts of Minecraft servers, right? In the, yeah. no, in, no different than Warcraft or anything else. You can't fit everybody on the same server, so you have multiple servers. Art imitates life. So why would this place be the, you know, the only, the only, it's not going to be a one-off. But what makes it more interesting is because we don't know what's outside of this world, the other buildings outside of this world could be in completely different stages and probably are yeah. of advancement. You know, it's like, oh, this is the Victorian era. Oh, these guys are still playing with sticks and rocks. Uh, you know, or these, or, or, you know, these are blue people. Oh, look, they, they do look like Avatar. You know, that, that sort of thing. So, um, so I mean, in, in terms of the, um, the actual kind of, um, the, the physicality of it, I mean, you know, other than, as you say, you know, these islands and all that, I mean, like the sun, for example, what right. would you, but what would that be, if you know what I'm trying to say? Oh, yeah, that's, that's easy. Um, so the sun and the moon, you're right. That, that's, a, that's a great question. It's, okay, so you're living in a building. I only described what was on the ground. Um, <clears throat> up above you is no different than a planetarium. So everything that you see up above you is are just lights on the ceiling. Um, stars, of course, very, very easy to do. We can do that in a planetarium all day long. The sun and the moon, however, are larger, but not as large as you might think. So the sun isn't 93 million miles away. It's probably only a few thousand miles away. And both the sun and the, and the, and the, the, the moon isn't 237,000 miles. Or let's just round it to 240, 240,000 miles away. It's way, you know, it's about the same distance and the same size. There have always been these coincidences when it comes to localized space phenomena that science just waves off as coincidence. Like, why does the moon fit perfectly in front of the sun during an eclipse? It's like, well, because it's 400 times closer and 400 times narrower. It's like, wow, that's lucky. <laughs> um, and then you take the moon and, and well, a lot of people, again, people don't understand. It's like you only see exactly one side of the moon. It's locked in, meaning... You, you know, you'd think that after a hundred years, you'd get like a half of a degree turn or something like, no, the moon never shows even a, a freaking hundred yards difference. It's always showing you exact same thing. And, and, and you ask scientists, they're like, well, it's just a coincidence how it's locked in. Like that's, wow, yeah. that's, that's pretty amazing. What about the craters on the moon, for example? Oh, I'm sorry. Let, let me do the sun and the moon. So the sun and the moon are, let's say about 50 miles wide. Uh, very, very tiny. So all the diagrams, which is one of our drawbacks, because when we have to draw the flat earth, you know, for an illustration in, in a modeler or just draw it, we have to draw the sun and the moon big just to make it show up on the map. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to see it. So but we, like when we like the, the normal models, you know, the, the moon, which supposedly is 2000 miles wide in reality, we have to draw it about almost 2000 miles wide just to get to show, you know, just so you can see it. And then when you draw the sun 2,000 miles wide, 
Well, people, the question is, well, if it's that big, why isn't everything lit up at the same time? It's because it's not that big. Well, why'd you draw it that big? It's because we have to, and then it just spirals into a whole other thing. But what I was getting at with the the moon was, um, sorry, I got to bring up the moon craters really fast. The fact that the moon craters are all spherical should bother people because that means that when they were hit, you know, when they hit, they came in at a straight angle, you know, um, pretty much straight down. It's like, yeah. well, how does that work exactly if you've got this huge gravitational pull from the Earth, right? Wouldn't they be deflecting? Why aren't there huge skid marks, you know, where, or, yeah. you know, or divots where it hits and drags and then takes off? The, the moon is, it's like it was decorated that way. And yeah. which, which would make sense. If you were going to build something like this from scratch, you would make it ornamental in a certain way. And yeah. then, you know, if the, if, the, if the local population picks up on it, yeah. Maybe they will, maybe they won't. But science is usually really good about, you know, wiggling their way out of it. You know, they'll, yeah. they'll come up with anything, anything, that, we'll, but we'll get to that. So, um, And I suppose, uh, so the other big thing is um, you believe, right, um, that it's, that our kind of flat Earth is, um, I guess, uh, surrounded by a wall of ice, right? Right, right, right. So the only difference between the continents that you see... Uh, in the maps and the only continent that doesn't make any sense is Antarctica so all the continents so <clears throat> again if you want to know how the continents are laid out uh, you know anyone that's listening uh, or, or, or however you're gonna do this um, just um, uh, just look at the UN flag that's the easiest thing I mean seriously just type in the UN flag the UN flag is it is the map we use the question is, why is the UN flag laid out like that? That one's completely legit in terms of, you know, it's just an AE and azimuthal equidistant map. But the flat earth map is completely discounted. But Antarctica, obviously, you know, if it's laid out, if you take the globe from the North Pole and you squish it and you cut off all the, the jagged bits, and then the only thing you have left is Antarctica, which is, it's not uh, an island continent that about the same size as Australia sitting at the bottom. It's actually stretched around the entire outer edge. And it's much, much bigger than what people are, are led to believe, which is why it's off limits. You know, the Antarctic Treaty, which was established almost around 1960, says that no corporation, no matter how much money is involved, is allowed to set up shop there. Any corporation in the world. And it's like, what are you talking about? You know, in America, we, we can start fracking in that guy's backyard tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> right? It's not hard to do. We do these. Sort of, I mean, money. And I'll, I'll give you a reference on your side. If, you know, it, and it's not just that companies can't go down there. They're not even allowed to talk about it. you right. Antarctica is owned by no one. The entire con. Find me another piece of real estate in the world that is not owned yeah. by someone. So I'll bring up like British Petroleum. Why isn't B British Petroleum for the last 50 years, why haven't they been running full page ads in the London Times saying, oh, how great it would be to set up shop in Antarctica and create jobs and do oil and gas down there? They're not even yeah. allowed to do that. <clears throat> and that's exactly what you would expect if you were going to hide because you would take, you know, whatever ministers and it would be under the guise of national security. So you go to the head of British Petroleum and say, okay, so... You can't go down there. Here's the treaty. Not allowed to talk about it. And whenever you decide to resign or retire or whatever it is, you have whoever it is call me at whatever, you know, branch in, in your side of the world. And I'm going to tell them the same thing. You got to remember the, the, the Antarctic Treaty is the only unbroken treaty in the history of the world. And it's not even up for review until 2041. Now, we're a lot closer to 2041 now than we used to be. But you remember... When they made that treaty, it was 1960. And yeah. they said, oh, yeah, by the way, 80 years from now, we'll, we'll review it. It's like, what? <laughs> it's, it's a <laughs> long time. <laughs> so, yeah. So, anyway. So, um, something I suppose re related to that, um, if I uh, recall the, <laughs> the the James Buckley interview, I think you, you mentioned, um, is it um, is it Operation High Jump? Is, is that the name of it? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was, I mean, there were so many weird things, yeah. again, <laughs> that, that happened. You couldn't even get away with it now because um, uh, social media is so prevalent everywhere. Yeah. Um, but in 1946, I believe, 
right after the Japanese surrendered and, and World War II was officially over. The European theater had, had already closed down and, yeah. and, and the, the whole Japanese thing had happened. Right after that, you'd think, you know, everyone would be going home. But the youngest admiral in the history of the Navy, Admiral um, Richard Byrd, he takes a full-blown carrier fleet and support ships and 5,000 troops down to Antarctica for scientific reasons, right? Which they don't really talk about. The speculation is just rampant on this. Um, part of me thinks, the you know, because one of the stories has got to be true, or at least partially true, which was, um, if you remember Indiana Jones, the movie, uh, people don't understand that Germany was doing things during World War II that other nations wouldn't. Meaning yeah. they were the big believer. They're, they weren't kidding around. They were like, if they could find something to win the war, they don't care what it was. Yeah. If, 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 if it's Frodo's ring, they're finding it. <laughs> if Harry Potter's wand is on the mountaintop somewhere, they're going for it, right? The Ark of the Covenant, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> if they, they would do this. And so the reason I mentioned this is during World War II, every country that was doing exploration in Antarctica left save one which was nazi germany and it's like yeah. why would nazi germany be doing stuff in antarctica because of course you because they knew what was going yeah. on down there it's like are you kidding these were people you gotta remember at the end of the world war ii they had working jets and almost intercontinental ballistic missiles which they were firing yeah. your way they were testing cruise missiles on you guys um and the rumors so when when people were saying oh you know there was rumors that they were working like on like on time machines it's like, yeah. yeah, yeah, why wouldn't they, right? Yeah. They, it, 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 seriously, if they were, if they had the ability, they, there was all this talk about, you know, like the Vril Society, where like yeah. they were, this is like, it, to, to summon otherworldly, be like demons, to fight for yeah. them. Of course they would. Yeah. Why wouldn't they? They, they, they There was nothing, there, there was an old saying over here, um, it's a sports saying uh, by a, an American football coach, I remember from years ago. Uh, Vince Lombardi, and he, and he, it gets, this goes into the, the mindset, which is, he goes, winning isn't everything, it's the only thing. Yeah. And the way yeah. he said it, and he was one of those guys that had that intensity, it's like, oh yeah, yeah, this guy would lie, cheat, steal, and kill to win. And that was just a game, right? War? Yeah. <laughs> no, no. So anyway, yeah, so I mean, yeah, Operation High Jump, my thought is, is that they went down there to try to root out the last of the Nazi base, and whatever happened they took care of it because by the time richard bird got it went on his next television interview his big one which was in 1954 that wasn't even on his mind anymore so you know in the eight years that had passed they had taken yeah. care of it whatever it was the rumor that i heard which i love i, I love little because it, it, you know if i was i, I love i'm a big believer in good writing yeah. good plot line which is is that nazi germany or you we'll just call them germans the they asked an advanced civilization that was down there for asylum and they said look can you help us out here yeah. and they treated it like a, a high school dance where it's like you know it's like yeah yeah fine you can come with us you can't get back into the gym you know you're you're not it, you know once you once you leave you can't go back you know you yeah. can't go drink into the parking lot and then go back in there and cause trouble and that was it. We, we never heard from them again, uh, which is why it was so interesting that the um, uh, the movie, you know, now there's a sequel to it. You ever see the, the movie Iron Sky? Yeah. 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 yeah Iron <laughs> Sky, which, by the way, did did not get received well over here and hardly was released in any theaters for obvious reasons, yeah. right? There's yeah. certain things you can talk about and there's certain, certain things you can't. But when you have as many... Um, um, Jewish people that are in the production houses of the American media, and, yeah. and they're like, "You're doing you you you're gonna what now? <laughs> Wait, they're back. They were so they were on the moon, and now they're attacking us again. No, yeah. no, we're not promoting this ever, 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 ever. So we'll we'll uh, go we'll go with inglorious bastards, but we're not gonna go. Yeah. We're not gonna go down that road. So. Um. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, obviously touching on it. Um, yeah, one of my sort of favorite um, sort of uh, aspects of history is, um, yeah, obviously fascinated by the sort of yeah Nazi occultism. I guess is the oh yeah, it's the term it would be, and obviously yeah, looking at the Spear of Destiny and um, you know the Nazi bell and, and and stuff like that. And um, 
obviously, yeah, within about five minutes of going down the rabbit hole, you know, you sort of get to um, Heinrich Himmler and all the expeditions that he would send for the, the Holy Grail and that. And um, I remember um, I, I listened to, to one podcast where they talked about um, one theory, which I guess plays into this, which is, um, yeah, the idea that obviously they were um, fascinated with trying to sort of trace their, their lineage back to like, you know, an old powerful Nordic race. And right. then obviously other people say the Nordic race obviously uh, was from another world and they were the ones, you know, in the Antarctic. Um, and I suppose, yeah, you know, do, do you therefore, you know, believe that, yeah, they, they found, I, I guess, we'll say Nordics, but, you know, but it could be whatever. Um, you know, you believe that, yeah, they, they found... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I do, but I don't think they, they fully could use it to their advantage for whatever reason. I mean, the rumors were is that the Americans... Were, we actually tried to engage this older civilization and got hit pretty hard by them. But Germany was in no position to make a deal that was going to help them. Obviously, you know, here we are, twenty twenty two. They're not back. You know, some yeah. some of, some of Nazi Germany, of course, fled to South America. All those stories were absolutely true. You know, they, they again, they were a very the this the part, and this is a whole other thing. The part that people don't get into is that the Roswell incident was probably not isolated in that the, the early stories were that a saucer very similar to that one crashed somewhere in the soft dirt of Germany and didn't yeah. break apart. And, and the Germans just reverse engineered the hell out of that thing. And because again, remember the, it, it, I, I can't overstate this. Germany was taking on the entire world simultaneously. <laughs> Japan as an ally, they didn't really care about. That was just a distraction on, on the other side. Yeah. They it took the whole world to beat them, and the stuff they were the 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 tech they were coming up with. I mean, yes, of course, German engineering, yeah, great, and Mercedes and BMW and Volkswagen, but they shouldn't have been that good. You know what I mean? Yeah. They were way above. They were fighting way above their weight limit on on this, and they were pulling it off. To where, I mean, there were some critical strokes at the end of that war, um, one of it which being D-Day, which was, I mean, let's face it, if the Americans didn't get, in, didn't get involved at the end, that was it. You know, Germany was, yeah. uh, you know, England was done. Russia was already on fire. Uh, yeah. they, they had suffered incredible losses. But, the, sorry, I don't mean to dig digress, but there was this one moment, uh, if you ever watched the movie Patton, which was the Germans were so they, they bet they bet everything on that Patton was going to lead D-Day. So wherever, wherever Patton was going to be, that's where it was going to be. So it was a bluff. So they put yeah. Patton out in the middle of nowhere. And it's like, OK, we're yeah. concentrating on him. It's like, oh, no, we're going to Normandy. And they're like, damn it. I mean, you know, but, you, but if they had bet differently, if they had put everything on Normandy, then the, the whole thing would have been different. So anyway. So so, so yes, yeah, so, I mean. You know, therefore, I, I, I take from that that, um, uh, you know, you sort of believe that they got, yeah, outside during the war, you know, before they were sort of trying to get asylum, you know, would you say, therefore, they they discovered another power or another race yeah. and that helped them in terms of technology? I, I do, I do. I think some of, them, some of them got out and used it to their advantage and, you know, were taking, you know, again, if you ask for asylum outside of this world, well, that's it. You know, you're, you're, yeah. you're, you are you can't, you can't, you're, you're not gonna be able to do the mischief you did over here because yeah. now it's a whole different thing. Beforehand, you were the, 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 the tip of the spear in terms of cutting edge technology yeah. and you were using that for nefarious purposes. Outside of this world, nah, you're just everybody else. And yeah. heck, they, they probably they probably disarmed them on top of it. It's <laughs> like, yeah, you can, you can keep all the black outfits, but that's about it. You know, yeah. you're, you're not bringing in any any of your stuff. And come on, let's I mean, look at what happened after the war where the Soviets took half of again, one of those weird things about war, which is if you have real if you have if you're super intelligent and you're on the engineering scientist side of things, you have a physical value to you, a monetary yeah. value. And so you don't get executed. Right. There's no uh, war. There's no uh, war yeah. crimes for you. It's like, no, no, no you're an asset. So we're yeah. going to take half the scientists and move over in the Soviet Union and the other half of the scientists, we're going to move over to the States and including, including Werner von Braun and both sides. What do we think they did? They immediately developed, you know, started escalating the, the rocket technology. 
You know, yeah. they, they used basically both sides created, took the German V2 rocket technology and turned them into both uh, rockets that supposedly were going to, you know, help with space travel and the, you know, missiles that just kept getting bigger and bigger yeah. and bigger. So, yeah, it was a wild, I mean, wild time. Yeah, because, I mean, you know, yeah, and, yeah, that's obviously you're fully correct. I mean, I, it makes me think of, um, I can't remember what they're called. Is it, is it units? Um Unit seven three one. The um, it it was uh, it was it was more. Uh, but that's that's your British, that's your Brit that's the British side, right? Uh no, that's um. So uh, it was a Japanese unit during the war that did um sort of horrible amounts of uh, experimentation. You know, but you know, uh, people who were still alive put their limbs in like liquid nitrogen and then hit them to see all sorts oh, yeah, of experiments. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. And, Let, let's... And, and yeah, after the war, you know, the, the scientists didn't get executed. They had a deal with the Americans, and you know, oh, suddenly, yeah. you know, it, the Americans, yeah, yeah. Nice. And by the way, and I don't want to go necessarily down a dark path, but come on, all the metal medical experiments that the the Germans did. You know, it's yeah. like the Americans say, oh, yeah, well, we burned all those records. The hell you burned all those records. Yeah. The, the dollar <laughs> value of that research was priceless. And in yeah. our case, all pretty much unrepeatable, right? Yeah. You know, you, you had access to research that you couldn't even begin to start over here. Yeah. And so it's it's interesting. You know, everything has this, you know, war is, is still about money and, and resources, but it's also about information. And yeah. but but you have to you have to put on a good face for the public. You know, you got to show, yeah. you know, it's like, oh, it's outrageous. And of course, we're going to punish these people. Well, not those scientists over there. No, no, no. We're going to keep those. Yeah. But <laughs> you people, you know, we're in Nuremberg for you. And it's like, oh, wow. Yeah, it's it's it, just... it, uh, Yeah, I mean, it, it reminds me of a, yeah, an article I read um, probably a couple of months back, which I think was about um, a book that obviously Joseph Mengele had written, mm -hmm. which is really controversial because right. you know you have a lot of like especially like american doctors who like don't want to use it but on the other hand <laughs> it's seen as one of the most sort of you know beneficial because it's full of information oh, yeah. that, you know yeah yeah so but, well, here's, so, yeah. here's, here's, so, it, it, you know. here's one for you really yeah. quick um the the movie with sean penn 20 21 21 grams you know about that movie where uh, i've Bit, the, uh, okay, the the Germans that was just that was just a side issue the Germans came up with you know because they measured everything right you know they they measured and counted everything <laughs> probably too much but they 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 and people some people say it's a myth it's like I don't think it's a myth and that is because if anyone was going to do it, it was the Germans that was they accidentally they noticed that when people died they um they immediately lost 21 grams of weight oh the, the soul yeah the it's whole about, soul thing yeah, and i'm yeah. going what <laughs> and, yeah. and it only <laughs> happened with humans not animals and yeah. it's like what and, you know because 20 grand grams that's not you know it's not nothing you know that's and yeah. it was and it was yeah. instantaneous it's like was where is it an energy weight is it a magnetic field thing yeah. where where you know the body becomes lighter and people are yeah, yeah they they sci there are certain things that science doesn't know know what to do with so they just don't talk yeah. about it. twenty one grams yeah. uh, the hundredth monkey effect which leads into a whole do you ever hear about that one uh, I don't think so oh no. look up that if you get a chance the hundredth <laughs> monkey effect um, that was done off some islands in the Pacific Rim and again science comes up with you know scientists make up all sorts of crap it's like hey, let's let's try this right. So they were teaching, they were throwing potatoes to monkeys on these islands and they showed them or, or the monkeys kind of figured it out initially, but I think, you know, people were down on the beach. It's like, look, if you wash the sand off the, off the potatoes, they, they taste better. Right. And the monkeys started to learn this, you know, the monkeys are pretty smart. And what was weird was, and again, it's, you can look it up. Some people say, oh no, it's a myth. It's like, no, no, that's exactly how it would happen. You know, if you, if it was some sort of simulation and that was once about the hundredth monkey figured it out all the monkeys figured it out meaning once it yeah. got to 100 it was like that monkey over there that wasn't even talking to those monkeys oh yeah and those yeah. monkeys and those islands over there which are miles away they yeah. are now figuring this out which would go into an upgrade type scenario where it's like yeah. if it was beneficial for monkeys to learn how to wash off you know the potatoes all of a sudden it's like oh, okay somebody you know it get the system approves it and all monkeys now know how to wash sand off potatoes and or, or here i'll get one more for you which is um uh neuroscience and free will look that up there's a wonderful wiki entry on this where again scientists was like let's hook up electrodes to people's heads and have them choose numbers on a keyboard right 
and and there's a counter up above, you know, like seconds, intensive seconds. Yeah. And they said, okay, pick a number between one and nine on the keyboard, right? And 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 people and note and they they noted not only when they they hit the number on the keyboard, but they had the people make a mental note of when they decided to pick the number, right? You know, because normally it was fairly instantaneous. It's like pick a number between nine, one and nine. It's like five, right? You know, yeah. the second you think of five, well, that's when that's when, when you note the, the timer. What's weird was is that the 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 computer was figuring out. It didn't never, of course, knew exactly what number they were going to pick, but it knew when they were going to pick the number eight seconds before they picked it. So oh, if yeah. if you say you know if I say pick a number between one and one and nine you, you think four right yeah yeah the computer knew that eight seconds ago but that's impossible because you yeah. just thought I in fact I just asked you the question how could the computer know this it goes yeah. into the whole predestination thing that science hates so much which is are we not it's something I've been toying with and I we'll get to your question here which is it's not only could you possibly be living in a virtual reality, you could be living in a pre-recorded virtual movie, which saves yeah. a whole lot of resources. You know, if you've done enough stuff with virtual stuff, you realize that there's you can save a whole bunch of resources. It's sort of like people that are watching. You'll get this if you ever play any games. Um, people, the, the kids that don't actually play Fortnite, they just watch other people playing Fortnite, yeah. uh, uh, you know, yeah. on, on YouTube, right? Well, you realize that when you're watching somebody play Fortnite on YouTube, it's almost identical to what you would see in real life. You know, you don't know the outcome ahead of time, yeah. but the resources are tiny compared to you're just watching a little MP4, right? That's, you know, on, on a thing. But but in real time, it would be this massive server thing and all these resources. But a pre-recorded movie, that's nothing. So anyway, sorry. I, I mean... No, no, by all means, ramble away. It, 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 it's utterly fascinating. I mean, um, I, mean, I suppose, yeah, it kind of leads into another of my questions, which is, so I guess, would you say we have free will at all or like controlled free will to an extent? Or I think if you're a big sci-fi fan or if you know sci-fi at all, and I'm, 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 I'm about as deep into sci-fi as you can yeah. get. <laughs> um, I believe in free will, but only in the standpoint that you made the decisions already. So what you're in right now, you, in fact, there's a line from the matrix that talks about this. It just, just went over the head of everybody, which was when Neo was talking to, uh, the, uh, the Oracle in the second movie. And he goes, he goes, he goes, I can't make that choice. And she goes, you didn't come here to make the choice. You've already made it. You're yeah. here to understand it. And what I mean by that, I'll give you a movie reference. Um, Let's say uh, you're a director of a movie and you have total control, right? You have control over casting and script and editing, everything you can think of. You have total control. You make the movie from beginning to end. It's absolutely everything you wanted it to be. It's because, you know, of course, directors, the last director ever to do that was, I think, Orson Welles when he made Citizen Kane. He had total creative control. They yeah. literally, he, no one could talk to him about anything. Um, yeah. <clears throat> but and you finish shooting the movie, and then uh, you, you, you run down the stairs too fast, you bump your head, and you have temporary amnesia, right? And a day later, it's like, hey, the premiere is up. It's like, you go to the premiere anyway, right? And people are like, oh, no, you're going to be fine. You're sitting there. Everyone around you is just watching a movie. But to you, it's the most perfect movie ever made because every decision on that screen you agree with. You're like, this is it's absolutely perfect. So yeah. That's who I would have chosen. That's the music I would have used. You know, that's everything's perfect. So why wouldn't you do that in something like this? Meaning, think think of it like um, because one of the the big drawbacks about big you about a big we'll just call it a big MMO or a big simulation is that that we, that we make now is the 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 randomness and the disappointment right there's always bad things that happens always people that bail and things go wrong and you spent all this time you know warcraft people are notorious for it you know you spend hours and hours on a big raid and it just collapses and it's like oh my god i'm not getting that time back right what if you set it up all ahead of time to where you had the peaks and valleys but at the end the hero's journey was completed what if you could make all those choices? And by that, it's an easy thing to do. Let's say you're outside this world and you're picking everything to go. You'd pick the major points. 
uh, you know, you, you, you win a local contest here, you get married here, you have kids, here's your career, blah, blah, blah. All the little stuff gets filled in. You know, you don't have to choose that you're going to brush your teeth 15,000 times. You don't have to choose that you're going to, you know, have a shower or, or um, you know, vacuum this or whatever. All the little things are filled in for you. But the big choices, get back to your free will thing. The big choices, you, yeah, you make them, but I think you make them before you get here. Yeah. You know, it's, it's just, it's just conservation of resources. That's how I would do it. Uh, you, why, all you need, the, the reason why I think it works is because all you need to make it work practically is a memory block. That's yeah. it. So it's, it's the old, oh, the old metaphor, which people say it's a dead metaphor, but I disagree. You can't have your cake and eat it too. Right. Yeah. Sort of like you can't live your life. You know, nobody remembers what happened before they got here. Right. You know, billions of people. Nobody remembers what happened. Of course, you got people who are like, no, yeah. I was Cleopatra. No, I was Napoleon. Whatever yeah. you, you might yeah. have been, but no one remembers it clearly. Everybody comes in out of a fog. Right. You know, at this young age and they, you know, you learn things. But it's interesting that that, again, nobody remembers it. So what, you know, what are you looking at? You know, everyone, it, it's the same experience for everybody, but it's different. So yeah, the, I think the the free will aspect is is done beforehand because it's more efficient. Than, yeah. it's it's the most efficient option to to do. If you were you know we've been trying to if you if and again and it's got to be flawless. Meaning there was a movie you want to look at a great movie under completely underrated movie, um, Robert Redford in the Discovery. Uh, with I can't remember some of the supporting cast, but it's good and it's about a scientist. It's a little bit of a ripoff of Brainstorm from the the nineteen eighties with with Christopher Walken, but the the concept was a scientist, a neurological scientist, figured out mathematically that there was an afterlife, and when he did that and released it, you know, the papers, it's like oh, I figured out something like forty million in the people in the world committed suicide almost immediately. Yeah, because. If you knew there was an afterlife and this afterlife was better than your current life, why would you stay? Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so there, the, one of the most realistic things I've ever seen in cinema was a part later on in the movie where they progressed their research and finally they figured out how to record human thought. And of course they, you know, they, and they, they record the human thought of someone that had died a day earlier and they noticed that he wasn't he was going through parts of his life and correcting mistakes in a virtual world. Right. And as soon as they saw that Robert Redford goes, you realize what we're looking at right now. He goes, he goes, burn it all. He goes, destroy everything, destroy the tapes, destroy the machines. I want all this research just wiped out because if that had gotten out into the general public, mm -hmm. the civilization would collapse uh, almost yeah. immediately because people are sorry. I, I don't mean to digress too much. People are inherently lazy, really, really lazy, and they don't like the struggle. You know, they, the reason why they, they carry on is because they don't think they have any other option. If you told them there was an option, it's like, oh, why are you suffering so much? You know, <laughs> you know, the, the afterlife yeah. is, is great compared to this. It's like, yeah, I'm going to go find a bridge somewhere. Yeah. And, and that's that's how yeah. it would go down. So which yeah. is why you have to absolutely make sure that part is bulletproof. You, uh, you, you hide that you, you make sure that as far as the system goes, nobody comes back and, and has an absolutely clear recollection of what the, 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 the afterlife is or the outer world is. Yeah. So, sorry. So, I mean, um, so I suppose, yeah, looking at in terms of, um, obviously, yes, as a, as a, as a, as a conspiracy, I mean, how high level you know is it any kind of scientist knows is it like you know is everyone that working uh, at nasa no. kind of knows this is it no it's the, it's the so, it's the opposite this isn't like the manhattan project where they had hundreds of thousands of people refining uranium for the first atomic weapons that the united hmm. states used now they hid that through compartmentalization and and the fact that people were ignorant. I mean, you've got people refining uranium in the 40s for a weapon that doesn't exist yet. So no one's going to put that together. They're going to be like, yeah. it's like, what are we refining uranium? What for? I have no idea. You know, yeah. only a few people at the top knew that it was going on. When it comes to, to the whole flat earth thing, uh, need to know is, is a term I throw around a lot. And also that less is more, meaning... 
why would you tell anyone what the world is? So scientists, no. 99.9% of, of NASA employees, no. They, they, why would you tell them? Um, it's, we're talking about a military operation here in order to keep this thing a secret. So, um, in fact, the only guys that would know at NASA... Now, are there some super, super rich people that probably know? Um, I call them the authority uh, because there's no real name for them. The, the first rule of power has never, ever changed, and that is stay hidden. Um, so when people talk about, oh, you know, Jeff Bezos and, and, and Elon Musk yeah. and, and, and Bill Gates, it's like, no, no, no. They, those guys are, are n new money, right? Uh, yeah. I'll, one of your terms. They are newly minted, <laughs> right, mm -hmm. compared to <clears throat> everybody else. No, I'm talking about families that, that go back hundreds and hundreds of years in Europe that – you could have, like Bill Gates might be able to schedule a meeting with one of these, you know, families, right? But he's not going to be rubbing about elbows with them on a regular basis, right? That he's just, he's just useful to them. These are people that don't yeah. even look at numbers as in terms of, of money. Um, when it comes to NASA, there was a wonderful movie uh, I talked about in the clues called Capricorn One, which was done in the, the late 70s. Then the concept was, is that NASA screwed up something and they had to fake a Mars mission. Because the, the, they knew the rocket was not going to work. It was, it was just not going to work, but they had already committed. There was already money involved, so they decided to fake it. And in the process of faking it, you learned a lot about who had to know and who didn't. And the only guys that really had to know were the telemetry guys, if you know anything about telemetry. Meaning, it doesn't matter if you made the fuel systems, or you polished this, or you know, built, engineered that. It's the guys that track the rockets doesn't matter if it's manned or not rockets once they leave visual range so when when a rocket goes off of visual range you have telemetry where it is where does it sit in 3d space okay well it's 20 miles that way and it's 7,000 feet up and and it's going at this speed those are the only guys that have to know anything and the the whole concept around capricorn one there was this great scene where a young telemetry guy wrote his own program because he he thought that something was off and he figured out, he, he, and he was going to his superiors, going, he's going, it doesn't make sense. He's going, I've got the transmission from this thing at 70 miles away, you know, yeah. at, at an Air Force base on the ground yeah. in Nevada. And, <laughs> and that was it. He was done. I mean, you know, there was a, the, one of the spookiest scenes ever where he was erased from existence. Yeah. It wasn't that they killed him. You didn't even see him die on screen. His apartment was rented out. His, his apartment was cleared out and replaced with a woman that they simulated to where she'd already been there for years to where even the magazine yeah. labels, you know, you get, you know, and, and, and there was no record of him anywhere that, you know, he, he was gone. And that's a, you know, the, the, the one movie quote, which I love so much, which is, you know, there, when you get to a certain level, they can lock you in a room and throw away the room. You know, you, yeah. you'll never, you're never going to recover from that stuff. So long story short is that very, very few people have to know the whole picture. They don't even tell the astronauts nowadays what exactly is happening. I believe that they told the, the Apollo astronauts, which is why they became such basket cases. You know, they all crawled into bottles. They were recluses. They were just freaking wrecks. And I think it, because when you psychologically profile heroes like that, the, the, the Right Stuff, a great movie on the, on the American astronaut recruiting tool. These guys wanted to be heroes. These were Boy Scouts. These were people yeah. that, that, you know, stand up, you know, square jawed and looking at the sky. And, oh, yeah, we're going to do that. You know, Buzz Lightyear type of stuff. Yeah. And they, when they found out, again, with Capricorn One, they pulled them out of the capsule at the last minute and said, yeah, you're not going and here's why. Right. And the astronauts very quickly you know, said, yeah, we're going to do the right thing and we're going to, we're going to rat out NASA, which meant they were going to be hunted down. Yeah. These guys went along with the program, but there's only so much false accolades you can go with, right? If you're a stand up guy, yeah, people can pat you on the back and you might be able to take credit for certain things. But you got to remember over here, we had full blown parades that went on for miles for these guys yeah. you through the major city new york and dc and every there were schools named after these guys right while they were still yeah. alive it's named after you know it's like the, these were the heroes of the day these guys cracked they're, they're like yeah and and of course you know they were told under no certain circumstances because they're all military officers you know there's no civilians 
uh, they're like, look, you know, it's they, they're under a different set of rules. Meaning if you do if you do the wrong thing, it's treason. And I don't know what treason is over there where you are. Treason is a bad thing over here. Yeah. It's not like you go to court. No, no, you're taken yeah. off to a black site somewhere until they can figure out yeah. what to what to do with you. So anybody after that, the the astronauts that we have now, which again they're all just military officers, most of them Air Force, um, is they're, they're they saw they're they're treated. Um, what I say is they're treated no different than spies, right? So. A spy, you know, you've seen the movies where it's like spy. It's like, yeah. okay, you're going to take this rifle. You're going to point out this window. You shoot this guy next to a hotel at this particular time. And that's it. Here's the photo of the guy, right? You're yeah. not allowed to, you know, you know, the, the political backstory, the intrigue involved. They, they don't care. The, the spies yeah. are like, it's like, yeah, it's above my pay grade. I'm not going to ask. I'm just going to shoot the guy, right? It, you know, everything yeah. else is, is for somebody else. Right. That's how compartmentalization works. So when the astronauts, it's like, it's like, oh, yeah, you're going to fake this thing in this vehicle and you're going to say these lines and it's above your pay grade to even ask. And it works out better because their conscience is clear. It's like, oh, yeah, that, yeah. that way they can smile. They can joke around. There's not a heavy conscience. They, they can just do whatever they, they want to do. And, uh, and, and it has worked. That that has worked since since they, they do. I will say this about the authority. They learn from their mistakes. And so everything that is fake now, it is very tidy. Their production value is rubbish, absolute <laughs> rubbish. Uh, but we'll get to that. So, um, so I mean, you know, when you look at um, stuff like, you know, um, obviously astronauts and that go up to, uh, you know, the ISSS and stuff like that. So what do you believe in? happens in terms of that so obviously they're not going no and and by the way there's a wonderful show that uh, you should look up it's it predates you just a little bit but it was from a few years ago and i put it on my channel i'll send you the link to it if you want uh, but i know you can find it on youtube it's called space cadets did you ever hear about that show it was a british show reality show where they psychologically profiled a bunch of people for a fake british space program and they took these guys out to an abandoned RAF base that they had converted and made it look like a Soviet base, well, a Russian base. You know, so they, yeah. they pretended to fly them from, I mean, the whole thing was fake, where they fly them from London to Russia. And really all they did was they did circles around England for yeah. a few hours. And then they just <laughs> landed back down in London. And then they, you know, they took them in these, these trucks, you know, fake Soviet trucks. It was straight out of Mission Impossible. And yeah. at the end, three of these people were going to go into a fake space shuttle and be in space, right? And yeah. when they, and, and that's, they did, they simulated to where those three people, now there were, I think two or three actors that were part of the big group, you know, cause you have to have people that are inside that are yeah. kind of helping it along. So there's no doubt, right? And at the end the finale was heartbreaking because these people were, that shuttle you know, and again, fake space out the windows and the whole nine yards. Yeah. And they were buying it to where yeah. the finale was. They were very British. They wheeled them into a big sound stage with a full yeah. blown audience. And when the smoke cleared and they came out, imagine that you're walking out of a space shuttle. Yeah. You think you're in orbit and you're walking out into a sound stage and you realize it was the biggest prank of all time. But the point was, is they did, they did it. And they did the whole thing for, I think, less than five million pounds. Wow. The whole thing. Wow. And so, yeah. so what, you know, if you were to do that for the ISS, and this is just for TV people, this isn't fake, you know, pretend, yeah. you know, <laughs> convincing people they're actually up there. <clears throat> it was easy because all you do, first thing is you obviously do not put anybody on the top of a pile of liquid explosives. You know, nobody's, nobody's yeah. on the rockets ever. You just launch the rockets, which is why when the Challenger blew up in 86, eh, that was a little troublesome. You had to put them into witness relocation. And then we found pretty much all but one of them later, but that's a whole nother thing. Um, and then uh, you put them off to an Air Force base, whatever it is, and you have them, or, you know, run the simulations and whatever. Uh, or you, you, you can do a combination of green screen. We used to do um, um, zero G simulator planes, which is just planes that go parabolic and then yeah. knife down. It's you basically it's it seems like it's zero G, but you're really just falling without wind. <laughs> that's all you're yeah. doing. It's really weird. <laughs> um, and then that's it. You shoot that footage and you you but you make mistakes, horrible mistakes, because, I you know, 
because sixty million dollars a day apparently isn't enough to buy top notch, uh, top notch effects. I mean, the fact that you're you're using immense amounts of hairspray on the women, you know, their hair goes straight up like the Bride of Frankenstein, uh, or the, the the green screen effects fail, or the the virtual reality layers fail. So you know, there's all we you know, people. I honestly, I, I, I applaud the fact that NASA is as bold as they are trying to get away with it, but they forget that there are so many um, nerds out there, I, look, me included, that, w you know, there's there's sites out there called moviemistakes.com, you know, you know yeah. where you will find, like, if a coffee cup moves from here to here, you know, yeah. within a frame, <laughs> and you know the character didn't move, so some guy at three in the morning in his underwear would be like, look, that coffee cup moved, I'm going to post this, right? And then it's out there forever. You, you again. This predates you, but the original Lord of the Rings, the the first movie, when the the hobbits were leaving the Shire, there's a famous scene you can find it where there's a car driving off to the corner of of of, of set, right? And you got to remember they made it through all of principal shooting, all of editing, all the different yeah. things, and that nobody saw it because everyone was focusing on the freaking hobbits. It went to yeah. the theater. And then all of a sudden, someone's like, hey, what the hell is that, right? And, and it's like, oh, my God. <laughs> so if if those sort of things happen, you know, again, because film uh, film production is yeah, everything shot out of sequence to save money for, for cost issues, there's always going to be issues there. So the fact that NASA tries to do things and tries to do them live, whoa, you know, anyone in show business will tell you, you don't do anything live if you can help it yeah. because there's these huge mistakes. So when it's like, and I know it's like, yeah, you want to talk to the students. So let's talk to the, you know, answer questions from the grade school kids, right? Yeah. What could go wrong, right? But the thing is, everything is recorded now. And, you know, the, the another movie line, everything on the internet sticks. And once it's out there, you know, it gets copied so many times and we catch as much stuff as we can, which is why we had so much success. Because we had a lot of people that were just, you know, once you start scouring a little bit of the footage, you go after all, you know, we've looked at, I think, pretty much every stitch of NASA footage ever since the 60s. So, wow, yeah, and there's a lot yeah, of it. So, anyway, so. Yeah. Um, I mean, I suppose it's probably a foregone conclusion to ask, but I mean, um, you know, obviously quite relevant. Um, obviously, recently, uh, you know, the James Webb. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, we I we just, actually uh, just... we had him on one of our uh, web himself. We had him on one of our programs. Uh, oh, what wow. I think is interesting is yeah, and we've dissected that thing. I mean, we've already got we <laughs> as we're talking right now. There's more and more videos being created by our our circles. But what's interesting was that how quickly they shut down that whole program. You know, the micrometeor that that just came out. It's like oh no, it's damaged. Yeah. Sorry, we we don't even yeah. know if it's salvageable. It's like all that time and billions of dollars yeah. and it's like what what because the images that you were putting out there were crap you know hubble yeah. hubble was bad enough and and then when this thing came out i'm going oh whatever we, for for us the no no the, the telescope stuff it is the imagery that they put out there in fact i'll give you a great example uh things you don't know you know people that forget because it's older than you uh, the first blue marble shot ever taken of uh, the full Earth in disc. You can look it up. Blue marble from space, 1972. First shot ever taken from uh, Apollo 17. And it's like, oh, what happened to Apollo 8 through Apollo 16? Why never, they yeah. didn't take a shot, right? But that's not the interesting part. The interesting part is the second blue marble shot wasn't taken until summer of 2015. So what happened? You know, you went yeah. all uh, most of the 70s, all the 80s, all the 90s, 2000, 2010, halfway to 2020. Then you take a second blue marble shot. And this is not yeah. myth. W they announced it to us because it was the summer we came out. You know, we started yeah. talking about this stuff. And all of a sudden, Obama, it's like second blue marble shot, you know, taken. And it's like, <laughs> it's like, what? It's like, what are you talking about? And Scott Kelly, the astronaut, apparently wrote the story from the space station right it's like i it's no one's gonna question this it's a we went 43 years nobody took a blue marble shot except for you know the other the second blue marble shot ever and again it just just slays me or the um oh hell you want to i'll give you an, a great image oh no uh, two quick stories one was i was running a tech support department uh in boulder colorado years ago 2000 2001 and I thought it'd be kind of cool to, um, the internet was f not new 
but it wasn't exactly what it was now. Yeah. You couldn't finish it like you could in the 90s, but, you know, it was, yeah. it was you could actually finish it in the 90s, believe it or not. You could actually go to all the sites <laughs> that actually were. It's like, oh, isn't there anything else? So I, I thought, okay, I'm, I'm going to do something iconic. I'm going to put different shots of the Earth on the tech support monitors. It's like, yeah, it'd be kind of fun. Just type in string after string after Boolean string saying, you know, Earth from space, different things of Earth from space, you know, world from space. And I kept coming with exactly one image, which was the, uh, the, the first Blue Marvel shot from 1972. There were no other shots out there. It's yeah. like, what? How are there no other shots? And I, I remember verbally back in 2001, I didn't know anything. I was like, NASA, you suck. It's like, how, how, <laughs> how bad can you, can you be doing this? Um, to the point, a few years later, when the first iPhone came out, and you can look this up, um, the, uh, uh, the, the iPhone wanted to have the same idea I did. It's like, let's put a cool shot of the Earth on, on the, the iPhones, the, the very first iPhones. Well, they didn't want to use the Apollo uh, 17 shot because, like, oh, God, that's from 72. We had, there's got to yeah. be other shots. So they hired a NASA guy to Photoshop up a brand new image, which is called the, you know, the Robert Simmons image or the first uh, iPhone image. And it was, it was pretty good, right? It was pretty good. But it was, there was a problem with it in that there was a, a cloning tool issue. Meaning yeah. it seemed like, and you got to pick on Americans, lazy, which is, it seemed like he had to finish it on a Friday or something and he was running out of time. So when he got to the Southern Hemisphere, he just took the cloning tool and cloned all these clouds in, in the Southern <laughs> Hemisphere. And it's like, oh, right on, happy hour. And, and, he, and he took off. And, and, and we, we looked at this as like, what the hell? I mean, it wasn't even close. I mean, he cloned all the hell out of the Southern Hemisphere. Why is that? Why is that a point? The point is, years later, when I went to the Houston Space Center in Texas, when I went inside the space shuttle exhibit, you know, full blown space shuttle on the full on, yeah. on the back of a seven forty seven, what did I see off to the side? But that iPhone image blown up to like yeah. three feet by two feet. Well, it's like well, it makes sense because NASA engineer did it, so NASA has the rights to do it. But it's like, why is this in here? You constructed yeah. <laughs> this for the iPhone. Why is this? Why isn't Robert Simmons' name here? In fact, Robert was interviewed because the 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 iPhone image was iconic. So he was interviewed by different people, and it, we've got him on audio. It, and it was a great quote. He was going, "Well, it is photoshopped because it has to be, because yeah. there was no there was nothing else to use except for you know he had to manufacture it from scratch." So. There are so many instances of those images out there to where even in the clues, you know, I, I, I mentioned, I go, I go, forget about still shots. Find me a moving video shot of an astronaut doing a 360 with the camera running any yeah. anywhere to where, you know, and I, I had to call him out. I said, um, uh, it's it's the the ultimate um, fourth wall. Right. On, yeah. on any show. It's like you don't you never, ever show the fourth wall because there is no fourth wall. Yeah. And uh, here, in fact, I'll throw I'll throw something at you real quick, which is there's something every once in a while I will use this image in speeches. I'll, I can dump it in. Um, I'll dump it into Skype real fast for you, which is this is a shot from Apollo, for example. Right. It's a great it's a great shot. It's just a random shot. It's de date and time stamped by NASA below. Right. And this is from yeah. uh, Apollo 12. Right. Hmm. The longer you stare at this photo, it's a beautiful shot. Wonderful shot. Yeah. Iconic shot. Perfect shot. But that's just it. When you start staring at it, it's a high def shot. You can zoom in anywhere you want. There's a lot of things wrong with this. And, <laughs> and because Americans don't know physics and they don't know engineering and they don't know anything, they, <laughs> they, uh, they didn't get it. Uh, the first thing is um, if the light source if is one light source, 93 million miles away, all those shadows should be running parallel to each other and they should never, in yeah. inter never intersect. Well, that's a problem because they're all going to intersect like the hot spot from maybe a studio light. That's I don't know, about 30 yards behind the, the guy that's taking the shot. Second is there's footprints everywhere, right? Footprints, footprints, you know, great, you know, perfectly uniform three to four inches of ash along this entire surface. Interesting, of course, that nobody took a shovel and dug down to see what, how deep that ash really was, but who cares? Yeah. There's footprints everywhere, but there's no blast crater underneath that engine yeah. at all, yeah. <laughs> right? 
Uh, here's the third one. Uh, the that wonderful little satellite dish there, right? That's 1969. That's not nowadays. This isn't direct TV. This is 1969. That thing's running off a car battery, right? It's got maybe a range. This is not classified tech. You know, you can look that thing up. It's a VHF transmitter. Maybe has a range of 50 miles. And that's Morse code, right? And this thing is doing yeah. 10 frames of color video a second and perfect two-way communication simultaneously? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> How in the world is this happening? Um, the, the the no stars thing, I let people go because everyone's going to say it's a, it's a camera setting. It's like, oh, there's no stars. It's like, no, there's no stars because the mathematical calculations would have been way too tough. Meaning, because it's date and time stamped, if the belt of Orion is in the wrong place, some nerd in his underwear is going to be like, you know, the belt of Orion shouldn't be over there. It should, yeah. it should be over here. So somebody made the decision. They're like, yeah, so no stars. We're not going to do stars. Yeah. It's like, and it's like, how do we get away with that? And But the big thing that most people don't get right here is the, um, is the spacesuits. You know, these were backpack self-contained spacesuits. And I don't care about the heating and cooling or oxygen or nitrogen. Well, the nitrogen's a whole other thing. It's like, where'd they get it? Um, or the, the oxygen scrubbers or anything like that. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. We, you know, we couldn't mention the oxygen scrubbers, which is, if you know anyone that scuba dives, you know anyone that scuba dives? Uh, I don't personally know. Nah, that's all right. But, yeah. The biggest thing for anyone that scuba dives, the only thing they care about, the only thing they care about is how much time they have left. They're, they have, yeah. they have, everyone wears a wristwatch and they all check it. It's like, well, we have 18 minutes left. We have 12 minutes left. We have, we have six minutes left. We've we got to get the hell out of here. Right. They, that's all they care about. You know, who never, ever talked about how much air they had left. Those guys, those guys yeah. apparently had unlimited oxygen at all times. No one ever talked about it. It's like, how, where, how, you know, you guys were, you were running around, you're putting together cars, you're playing golf. No one ever talked about how much air they left. There isn't a single audio clip about how much air they had left. Drives me nuts. Last but not least, the spacesuits themselves, and you can look this up. This is not secret information. The early spacesuits were huge, bulky, plasticky Doctor Who things where they're just yeah. metal and plastic and they realize it's like yeah this is not going to work you know the the capsule we were we'd have to build for this thing would be huge so somebody brilliant whoever came up with it said let's just use soft suits so, mm -hmm. wait 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 a minute we can't use soft suits we, it's like it, it's like thermodynamics it's like soft suits would just turn into a parade float they go <laughs> you know and they just tip over and it explode and they die it's like yeah but nobody knows anything about that we don't know. <laughs> seriously, people do not know anything about physics in, in this country at all. It's like, we'll just use a soft suit. It'll be fine. And it worked. Yeah. And to where, last but not least, uh, let me make this quote, which is when, I, when I'm in the States, I get it. You know, it's like, why do you believe this shot? Well, it's because, well, we're Americans right? wave the flag. You know, we're the greatest, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. But I ask people outside of, of this country, I ask them the same thing. It's like, why do you think the Americans went to the moon? Right? Why do you believe that? They all say the exact same thing. They said, well, because it was on television. Yeah. And I said, because the Americans would never, ever <laughs> lie about anything on TV. And they certainly wouldn't lie about that. <laughs> you know, yeah. because that doesn't put them in the greatest, you know, you know, puts them on this huge pedestal. Look what the Americans did. And to this day, I mean, I remember I was in um, Belfast. Uh, no, Dublin. I was in Dublin and I was asking this girl who was, you know, she was heavy, heavy science girl. And she was, and, and I, I go, doesn't it bother you? I go, I go, look, no one's been back. No one, no one's been there since 1972. I go, when are we going back? Right. And she looks yeah. at me with these glazed eyes and she goes, soon, we're, we're going back soon. And I'm going, yeah, I've heard that a few times <laughs> for 40 years. I've heard that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, well, yeah, it's, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's a very good point, you know, we, we have all this technology that you think we could do it, you know, a lot easier than we could all those years ago, and it's like, yeah, why haven't we, really? Well, well yeah, that, and the, don't forget there was a space race happening there. Right, you know the, yeah, the, the Russians yeah. were, were were kicking our ass, and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, the Americans went to the moon, and then the Russians quit. Yeah, but it's like it's like I've never seen that in the history of sports. It's like the <laughs> first guy crosses the finish line, the other people are like, well, might, might as well go home, pack yeah. it up, pack it up, and it it drove me insane because it's like that's not how it works, right? Everything else, you know, it follows a certain continuity, which is we put four people on the moon, they put five, we put a small base, we put a bigger base. And then the next yeah. thing you know, Time Magazine runs a story that says, has the Cold War reached the moon? That's how it would have gone. But the reason they didn't yeah. do it 
again, this goes on to, to Hollywood production values is continuity. Remember moviemistakes.com. If you have two studios in Los Angeles trying to shoot the exact same movie, there's going to be continuity issues. You know, one studio is not going to shoot it the exact same way and someone's going to figure that out. Well, imagine if you had a studio, like an Air Force studio, it's going to shoot it. And then a studio in Moscow that's going to shoot yeah. the same thing, right? Yeah. How is that going to work? Because it's not going to take long. Somebody's going to say, you know, the ash looks different, right? Yeah. Or it's like, why does the lighting look different? You know, the sun should be over there. Why does the sun look different? Oh, my God. The, some, they, they figured it out really, really quick. And they said, yeah, so we're going to take over from here. And yeah. you guys, you guys just fade back into nothing yeah. because we can't, we could, they couldn't, they couldn't do a simultaneous yeah. program. And I don't blame them one, one bit. They, that was one of the, the good proactive moves that they did, which was don't let, you know, they, there could not be two simultaneous programs along those lines. So the Americans did it, the Americans quit. And then nobody even tried after us. Yeah. Come on. I mean, you guys, I will give credit to Britain where credit is due, where um, Britain, I think, just stayed out of it. They, they're they like, yeah, isn't that you guys all over the places? It's like, yeah, yeah. we're a little above this. Yeah. We're, we're not, you know, we're, we're, we're up here. We're highbrow. You guys can, can, can do all that to where, look up the, the scene. There's a wonderful scene from the Sean Connery, uh, James Bond film. I think it's Diamonds Are Forever, where... Sean Connery was over in the States and he was running through a Hollywood area and he ran through a moon set, right? You know, where, where they were faking some moon footage, right? For something, yeah. right? And the, but it was for whatever reason, and the astronauts couldn't catch them because they were still in character. So they were running in slow motion and they couldn't catch him, right? Because it's like, because they were still in character. I think that was a little wink to to what you know it's like the, the british is like yeah we're not faking crap yeah. it's because always bugging it's like why don't you guys have a space program and it's like, it's like nope no nope, not gonna happen no, stay out of yeah it. yeah we're yeah we're not yeah we're this isn't us you the americans yeah you guys that that's you guys we're yeah. we're not we're not going for that um, i mean um i suppose um sort of Slightly away from the from the flat Earth thing, I suppose there's always this kind of um, you know preconception um, that you know uh, a conspiracy theorist who believes one sort of conspiracy theory, you know, there's always this conception that oh well they'll believe anything then. Um, I mean, I suppose you know are, are there any other big I guess you know mainstream um, you know conspiracy theories that you um, you know buy into sort of so the yeah you, landing, you of bet. Um, there's, there's an inch. That's an interesting question you have there because it works in reverse. Now before flat earth, I had an opinion because I, you know, I never got married, had kids. So I had an opinion on just about every conspiracy you could think of. Some I liked, yeah. some I didn't. Right. Um, yeah. but when, when you get into flat earth, because it's such a giant umbrella, that covers everything it's like if you could fake that yeah. then everything has to be um has to has to has to be looked at again um yeah yeah everybody that's in the community everybody that believes in flat you know not everybody that believes in conspiracies believes in flat earth obviously because flat earth yeah. is so huge but if you believe in flat earth you are open to every other conspiracy you may not like yeah. it so do I believe that, that JFK was more than, than advertised? Yeah, of course yeah. I do. Do I believe, though, that um, Elvis had Bigfoot's baby? No. Yeah. No, I don't. But, but at the same time, if someone came up to me with new you know, evidence, it's like, look, man, I got photos of Elvis. I got photos of Bigfoot. You got to see these. I will actually be like, yeah, you know what? I'll give you some time. I'll give you some time. Beforehand, I would just yeah. sort of shot them down. But I have the, I have talked to people again. It was the the opening line, uh, opening paragraph of, of the of the clues, where I you know I knew people that were convinced that the royals are made up of, of lizard people, right? Yeah. But those same people, you know, the the same people that claim that, I go, yeah, but what about flat Earth? And they're like, get the hell out of here! I'm going, what? Yeah. <laughs> what about the lizards? What what about them? Um. So yes, I I do believe in a whole realm of conspiracies, but I'm a little different. 
So yeah. I don't, for me, what qualifies as a conspiracy is if I can't improve on it, the conspiracy in, in any way, then I think it's probably legit. Meaning I'm a big yeah. believer in the greater good. If the, most people think that conspiracies are, you know, it's all sinister people with black hats, you know, twirling handlebar mustaches, you know, and they're, you know, <laughs> you know, it's all that. <laughs> it's not. Most of the time they're making decisions that are way bigger in scope that the that they're doing it for the greater good, but there's going to be people that suffer because of it. And mm. so when I look at things like, um, I don't know, Pearl Harbor, great example. Uh, you know, did we let, you know, Pearl Harbor happen over here? Did we let, you know, do we open it up for the Japanese to attack? Well, you, it, the, the bigger picture there is if the United States... We knew the Germans plan. Most people don't know there was tons and tons of German citizens already over here in the States. And they didn't, they wanted to take America without firing a shot. I mean, we were going to be, they were going to fly dual flags and that was, we were, we were going to be the big thing. It was going to be, you know, what Britain tried to do years ago. Yeah. And so how do you stop that? How do you, how do you get to motivate the people? You know, we, nobody wanted to go over to Europe. And so, you know, the, one of the oldest tricks in the book is to hit somebody in the back of the head. And when they spin around, you point at the guy next to you. It's one of the oldest tricks yeah. in the book, and it works all the time. You could do that on, yeah. on large scale. And so in this case, you know, we used it to enter World War II. Um, do I think the ends justify the means? Sure. Why not? If not, we're all speaking German, right? It, it wasn't, yeah. even, wasn't, wasn't even a question. So, but it's a big, it's a big thing. It's, it's usually too big for people. Um, but I'll give you like a smaller conspiracy just for the hell of it. Um, uh the um the Loch Ness monster <laughs> in your neck of the woods, right? Obviously yeah. <laughs> not real, right? But then you yeah. look then you look at something called the um in fact I might even have a slide of it for you. The uh look at something called the uh the coelacanth fish. Here's a great one. <clears throat> so the seal did I drop that in there? Yeah, I did. Uh, Hang on, I did. So the coelacanth fish, right? extinct for at least 70 million years right it's an ugly fish with a bunch of extra fins and here's a fossil record yeah. of it and everyone i mean everyone thought every scientist in the world would have bet the freaking farm this thing was dead well until the british navy caught one in a net off <laughs> off of um uh madagascar and in, wow, okay. in um or south africa in 1938 and that's a, that's a seal cat fish and they were very proud of that and there's british 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 people there so yeah. <laughs> and then they caught another one off of Madagascar and then Mozambique. And then they realized it's like, holy crap. They're like, they're like all over Africa. And it took years, you know, and then eventually, you know, you got National Geographic swimming around with them. So yeah. the question is, how did everyone get that one so wrong? Right. It's like, you yeah. know, and, and to where scientists had to backpedal. Can you imagine, right? It's like, oh, no, they're, they're living, fo yeah. living fossils and they're an evolutionary state of stasis. It's like you screwed up, didn't you? You absolutely yeah. botched this one. So go back to the original thing. So are, is it possible there are prehistoric lizards or, li you know, things living in Loch Ness? And you say, no, it's like, why not? Well, because they've been extinct for at least a hundred million years. I go, oh, you mean like this fish? Right here, yeah. like this fish <laughs> that you got absolutely wrong. You're absolutely convinced that it couldn't happen twice, yeah. right? <laughs> Even though, you know, there's lots of people up there that, that swear, you know, and by the way, it's not just in, it's Scotland, right? Not Loch Ness. Yeah. 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 It's not just yeah. Scotland. It's, it's, there's, there's freshwater lakes in, in uh, cold weather climates all over the place that have these yeah. things. It, it's what uh, a friend of mine called um, cryptozoology which is it's a, real, yeah. it's a real term which is people forget that until it's one of the bad things about science which is until science has one lying dead in front of them or alive yeah. it's not real the giant panda was a myth the giant anaconda mm. was a myth the giant squid even though we still yeah. never caught one is a myth i think there are yeah. species out there even now and i always think of british people when when i think of it like the john i uh, there's something i i uh, there was a, something i read about years ago i call i call it the goliath cobra a cobra which has yeah. basically got the head the size of a freaking horse right well you can imagine right somebody in a pith helmet walking around the jungle that runs into this thing it's like you know get, gets out his notebook it's like oh this is a fascinating specimen and it's like why is it coming at me? And then this last, it never gets discovered because, you know, the guy gets yeah. taken out. I think there's plenty of species out there that get, that, that still aren't discovered because, well, 
you know, you're just in the wrong place at the yeah. wrong time. So multiply that by, I mean, if you have other other conspiracies, um, you know, throw them at me. Do it, you know, do I, do I, am I suspicious about 9-11? Sure. I bring up building seven. Um, am I suspicious about Roswell? No, I absolutely think it happens. I, you know, watch the TV movie with Charlie Sheen. It is brilliant. It's absolutely what we would have done because, you know, it was, it was right after World War II. And that's something that, you know, <clears throat> the the communication levels weren't that great so when a military base guy you know again the series let me use roswell just for example i love this one which is you have a farmer that finds all this debris in his on his field yeah. right and he's like yeah, damn air force pieces of crap so he drives in to the air force base it's like get this stuff off my off my land right and the, and the air force guy is going are we testing something over there? It's like I don't know. Send it, send it, send somebody over there, right? And they, they, and they're looking. They're going, what the hell is this crap, right? And then the next thing you know, they put two and two together. It's like, oh my god, it's flying saucers! <laughs> and they, they tell the press immediately. They, they call up all the news stations. They're like, we got ourselves a flying saucer. Yep, we're gonna be heroes. And then it takes two days before the Pentagon all of a sudden picks up a paper. They're going, oh no. So, and then the Pentagon has to have them go back and retract everything, you know, and they throw out one of their guys under the bus and, and it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you're going to be the idiot in this one. And, yeah. uh, and, and so, but the point is, is that everything up until that point was, was perfect plot line writing. That's what we would do. Ignorance the entire way. You know, the farmer that didn't know what he had, the Air Force guys that didn't know what, and then they go to the farmer. It's like, so you're not going to say this about, you know, about say, uh, are you? It's like, well, I don't know what's in it for me. It's like, <laughs> what do you want? And I think he got out of it with, um, you know, he's, he got to start a new business, uh, like freezing meat and some brand new trucks and some crap like that. Yeah. And he never talked about it again. Of course, you know, mm -hmm. people can be bought. So, but are there other conspiracies out there that I believe in? Yeah, sure. M m again, it c still comes down to, if you ever look at a conspiracy, look at not just what happened, but who would benefit from it. Yeah. Um, if you, you might ask uh, eventually why, you know, why hide flat earth? Right? Why, yeah. why hide it? That, that's a big one. It's like, who would benefit? It's like, are you kidding? Yeah. It's not what you stand to gain it's what you stand to lose. So by 1960, civilization was already built, right? Everything, the cement had hardened. We had had everything in place. And you're talking about upsetting that balance for what? Yeah. What exactly are you going to do? I mean, academically, every university in every country would have to be uh, retooled. You know, libraries would have to be emptied. And re I mean, oh, my God, astrophysics and astronomy would be gutted. The remaining ologies, whatever ology you can think of, would have to be rewritten economics you'd have to spend world markets for months because you don't know what it means um and then the the five religious houses of the world you know um hinduism buddhism uh, judaism islam and christianity you're giving them leverage against science simultaneously that's yeah. the shortest illuminati meeting ever <laughs> it's like what could go what could go wrong and then this then someone like me rattles this stuff off and the guy at the end of the table who, who's always smoking he's going so yeah, we're going to keep a lid on this for now. <laughs> we're we're going to put a pin in this until, you know, till I say otherwise. And that and that was it. And then you you try to keep this thing a, a secret. It's it you know, it's pure you don't release it. You don't let it out into the public until you have a way to control the narrative. Which is why I think by the way, you and I are talking and we've been doing this the last 7 years, which is think of what's in place now. You've got high-speed internet, social media, 6 billion smartphones. I mean, more people have smartphones than have running water. Uh, yeah. You can you can push out a narrative to pretty much everybody in a matter of minutes, and it's the yeah. same narrative. And you can you can keep that going. I mean, that's what we look at what's happened over the last two or three years. You know, narratives yeah. have been spun. Now there's been some resistance, but with something like this, you know, you could and everything can be measured in real time. The brilliance of social media is. You know all the servers and by the way all the entire internet everything's based on a military backbone system you know it's not yeah. like the internet was just created out of nowhere it's the it's the military <laughs> bulletin board system that was just laced with all the you know we 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 put all the civilian stuff in it so when people say oh no they're not monitoring stuff on the internet it's like what yeah <laughs> i'm telling you if i if it was my internet i'd monitor everything every, every yeah. single thing yeah. i would develop server farms and audio recognition technology and i would record everything and flag I everything. Think of, um, I, I think of um, 
uh, the movie um, uh, The Big Short, um, and I think oh, yeah. uh, uh, Brad Brad Pitt's character in it, and I can't remember the exact quote, but I know that you know he um, you know, he plays you know someone who in real life was always you know suspicious about monitoring, and he's got about three phones. Yeah, yeah, he's got the phones stacked on top of each other. Yeah, yeah. and he's and he's you know and, and you know and one of the guys is sort of like oh you know come on and not you know listening in and you know Brad Pitt just says one quote which is like oh you know the CIA can monitor such and such. You know you don't think they're going to use it, and it's like yeah, it's a fair point. They've got the technology. You know why, why wouldn't they? Why wouldn't you? Yeah, I mean, Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it, it's, again, you don't tell people that you're going to. Uh, I, I'll give you a great example. It's like, look, there's, there's a, a quote from one of our presidents, FDR, from back in World War II. He goes, he goes only tell the people as much truth as they can handle and, yeah. and nothing more. You don't tell why, why, why would you tell them that, yeah. that you're, that, that, you know, and don't remind them, by the way, that the Internet is a military system. Don't remind them that the GPS system is a military system. Um there's so many little things. A great one was um, uh, our spy planes, you know, like the U-2 spy plane. We didn't have a U-2 spy plane. We didn't have spy planes, right? And then one was shot down over the Soviet Union. <laughs> and it's like, yeah. okay, so we got a spy plane. And it's like, okay, you know, until you get caught, it's lawyer's rules. Lawyer's rules apply to the military, which is deny, 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 until they absolutely have you. And then maybe you tell the truth. You know, yeah. you, you always lie. You know, every lawyer will tell every defense attorney. It's like, yeah, you know, they get paid to lie. Right. So yeah. when the SR7, you, remember, you know what the SR-71 is, the, the, the Blackbird spy plane? Oh, yeah. Okay, so yeah. the big Blackbird spy plane, we did a cute little thing where when it was retired, we announced it. Right. So out in yeah. out in Nevada somewhere, we had a press conference like, oh, yeah, by the way, we're retiring our uh, Blackbird SR-71. It's like. The what now? It's like, oh yeah, <laughs> right, this thing's been flying around, and uh, you know we, we're we're retiring it. You know it's basically them showing off. You know to to the other countries. Yeah. It's like by the way, we had this spy plane, and we're not even using it anymore, right? <laughs> and, which is not true. We still do use it for some things. And I remember this one reporter, and there's this, I think it was a one star Air Force general up on stage, and the reporter's like, "What are you replacing it with?" He goes, "Oh, nothing." <laughs> any questions and it's like and of course yeah. they are right and and the um and and the the nerds know what it is it's called the aurora and it's so fast that by the time you hear it it's gone right all you see yeah. is the is the the smoke trail from it apparently it flies at such a high rpm and and such a no low rpm but the thrust is so violent that you it's called donuts on a rope where it's it's like a thin trail followed by a donut, you know, and that's just you know the the burst, and it's just it's just wild. Again, they'll they'll retire that eventually and be like, oh yeah, this was another thing we yeah had. we had this. We, we, yeah. you, there are some secrets you can keep. Um, the Groom Lake facility, Area Fifty One, great one, you know where. As our camera technology got better, there were nerds that would go up on mountaintops and zoom in. It's like yeah yeah look 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 there it is the base and the base got bigger and bigger and the government figured out it's like. Just buy all the real estate around the base, all of it. <laughs> Just buy every yeah. mountaintop, every mountaintop that can see the base. Buy that, you know, buy that mountaintop, and then that's it. And then the rest of it will, you know, they still can't hide like the like the um, the planes that that fly to it, fly in from, from Vegas, and they're pure white, no marking, windows blacked out planes, <laughs> right? Yeah, and they fly out every day. <laughs> And nobody, you know, nobody can run stories on it. You know, you'd think the news would be like, oh, look, it's, you know, the planes yeah. that are going to the base that supposedly doesn't exist, but does. Yeah. That we see in movies, but isn't really there. Anyway. Um, I mean, I suppose, um, uh, very top of the minute, obviously, you know, the UK is just going through a almost unprecedented kind of heat wave. Mm, yeah. Um, 40 Celsius. I mean, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's a big deal. Yeah, I mean, so I mean, climate change. How does that fit into? Oh, I believe in it. Uh, there's a lot of yeah. people. There's a lot of people in the conspiracy world that do not believe in it. I absolutely believe in it. Um, and I've said this. I, I've never wavered from from this. And that is, if you're in a dome, if you're in a in a structure, then whatever's heat. And come on, look look at the just logistics of this. You've got a billion auto in, internal combustion engines running all the time 24 hours a day yeah. there are at least a billion internal combustion engines running 
at any given point in, in the world. Is that right? Well, let's just round it up to a billion, right? You know, it's, 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 yeah. it's trucks, it's cars, whatever. But there's a lot. At least yeah. hundreds of millions. Let's, we'll push it to a billion. A, a car engine, most people don't understand because, you know, we control, you know, the heating and cooling from inside it. It's just a little furnace. That's all it is. You could yeah. put that car engine in a house and heat a house up extremely well. Right. And that's because yeah. that's all they really are. Well, you put hundreds of millions of those things right at any given time in an enclosed system. What do you think it's going to happen? Yeah. I mean, I, 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 it's, I, I give the example. It's like take a propane lantern and bring it into your SUV while the air conditioning's running. Right. <laughs> right. You're going to create some and then bring another one in and then another one in. You, yeah. Uh, eventually, you're going to develop what's, you know, hot, weird hot and cold spots. Right. Which is why, you know, it was renamed from global warming to, to climate change. But overall, you put enough of these things in there. Oh, yeah. It's going to turn into a warming situation where the air conditioning system yeah. is going to lose. Do I think that, you know, there's an automated system that, that's controlling some of the climate in, in, in this world? Sure. You know, between the, the jet stream and the underwater conveyor system and, and the other stuff. Sure. It's trying to it's trying to compensate. But we're running into issues now where, again, wild weather that shouldn't be there you know, in, in certain yeah. places and it's becoming way more irregular and way more extreme. And the, 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 despite the snow here and ice here, no, the glaciers are still melting and, yeah. and the temperatures are going up in, in certain places. The fact that you're running into 40 degrees Celsius where you are is, yeah. is staggering. You know, I, I, yeah. you know, the, London is not known for, I mean, there's no. a reason why you guys go to the Mediterranean on a vacation. You know, you, yeah, exactly. you, you, yeah. you, the, you don't, everyone knows you, you, the, a lot of umbrellas are sold in, in London. So yeah, yeah, no, do I believe in, and it also made sense to me. It's like, look, doesn't the term greenhouse gas mean more if it's an actual yeah. greenhouse? That was, it was one of my biggest arguments always, which is, uh, no scientist has ever come back to me with it, which is what happens at the edge of space? Exactly. I go, what happens is that, you know, you've got gas, 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 and then you've got nothing, right? And again, most people don't know physics. It's like, look, a vacuum is a vacuum. Vacuum is irresistible. There's nothing that can defeat a vacuum, including gravity. Uh, a great example would be um, if you had a second story of your house and you turned it into a vacuum chamber right above you, right? And you pull the, the lever on it. What's going to happen? It's not like the movies. It's not this, you know, yeah. we only got two minutes of air left. Get the duct tape. No, no, no. It's violent. It's extremely. Look at um, there's some wonderful videos on uh, underwater pressure accidents. Just look those up if you get a chance. Yeah, yeah. Where, like saturation. Dive oh yeah, sub that. submarines, yeah, yeah. deep sea oil rigs. It's horrible. I mean, and it's it's very yeah. very fast in, in a fraction of a second. It's not like the movies, where you no. know it's it's like no no no. If a if a meteor goes through the craft, that's it. You know, you're, you're done. You're, the air's out of your lungs. You're, oh, it's awful. It's, it's horribly, horribly. I mean, you don't even have a chance to react. So what happens then? So, so my point is, if the air goes upstairs instantly into that vacuum chamber, when you go outside, why is the air still here? Exactly. Yeah. And, yeah. and and people yeah. will say, again, the only reaction you have is gravity, right? It's all yeah, anyone ever says. I mean, gravity, you mean the same gravity that couldn't keep the air in your room? So yeah. I go, so what is there more gravity out there? And then people say, well, no, the atmosphere weighs more. And I even had a woman and she was a physicist. She said, well, no, it's, it's like, you know, it's just little, little trace particles at the edge of space. And, and it doesn't pull that hard. I'm going, that's, that's not how it works. I go, I go, it's no different than um, holding a cardboard box full of packing popcorn, right? You pick the, the, the box up yeah, and everything's fine. Okay. Put the box, box back down, put a whole bunch of heavy books on it. Now pick that box yeah. up. Those books are going to punch right through the, it's like, what's your point? I go, I go, vacuum is not going to care about the little trace part particles that are at the edge of space. It's going after the whole planet. It's going after everything. It's going after the, the, the clouds. It's going after the upper atmosphere. It's going after the water. <laughs> it's going after everything. Yeah. And <clears throat> nothing's going to, nothing's going to stop it. And uh, yet nobody, nobody, will, nobody will tell me. That you know they they yeah. just they just try and they try, but again, Americans don't know physics, so. Um, so I mean, so yeah, so you you believe in uh you know in, in, in also climate change. Yeah. Um, so the I guess overseers for want of a better word, whatever you call the authority people in charge, yeah, the authority, yeah. Um, I mean, 
would you say then that they're just kind of letting it out you know if we're in this snow globe and this is kind of like an experiment yeah. you know is that is that why they're kind of just letting climate change happen and they're just sort of seeing yeah they're for for the authority or the world order or whatever you want there are certain things you can control about a population but there's certain things you can't and you really don't want to meaning industry is industry right and if you're going to build a civilization the engine i mean come on it's the it's the greatest invention of all time it's not the computers it's not the wheel it is the internal combustion engine that's when everything changed the side effect of it is brutal but eventually you're going to get to the point where you may have to deal with what's known and you may have heard it called the great reset which is sooner or later and and the bigger problem isn't because of the internal combustion engine and because it's based off of fossil fuels and one of the side effects of developing fossil fuels is fuel-based fertilizer which means you can create massive more amounts of, of food which means the population rate it's not even the population number that's not the part that worried them you know again i i'm speaking as a world order person right i don't go to all the meetings but every once in a while so the, imagine this it, you, could you put 20 billion people on this planet where we, we were pushing eight before the whole virus thing could you put 20 billion people on this planet yeah of course you could um there there is huge tracts of land everywhere especially over in the states it's, it's like yeah you, you got some crowded yeah. cities here and there but you drive 100 miles off that way there are there's there's so much land with nobody on it at all that you it's just a question of food and it's a question of birth rate and i'm not trying to be weird when i when i say that it is it's not just the population it's how fast the population is moving upward the graph is tracking so high that the the, the world order has decided it's like it's going to go vertical so we've got to stop stop it as, as fast as we can um where was i where what was the initial question on that um <laughs> it, uh you know like uh yeah why um you know whoever's in charge would yeah sort of allow climate change oh yeah 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 so you allow it you allow the climate change thing to happen because it doesn't matter anyway you've got bigger fish to fry so um eventually the, the the climate thing yeah climate change that's an issue of course it is no, you know no question the the water thing seems to be compensating you know even though the glaciers are, are melting and, and big chunks are breaking off of antarctica florida isn't flooded yet right and and there's yeah. big lowlands out there yeah there's some small islands no question we're not talking about it that much where the islands that are literally sitting six feet above sea level yeah those are going under and and we we've seen yeah. those but that's not much in the grand scheme of things um, their, their bigger issue is population and, uh, and the, by that, I mean the, the population rate. And so, yeah, yeah they're, they're letting, they're just going to let that happen. They're the... <laughs> all right. Again, I'm not, I'm not going to try to be <sighs> too dark when I say this, I'm, uh, even though Greta would probably be upset if I said this. So <laughs> imagine if, if you want to slow down climate change, you have one of two options right one is you convince all the industrial companies in the world to you know under all those different jurisdictions simultaneously to make less money to constrict their industry for the greater good yeah never ever 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 gonna happen <laughs> never ever and they know this so you don't even ask it's like in yeah. fact that would be one of those things where everybody at the illuminati table would wait there would be this pause and people would like <laughs> and then they laugh for like five minutes and after they wipe their tears and be like okay what it was seriously what are we gonna do and the other thing it's like well lower the population because that would that would definitely help a great a great deal because that's you know that's still what's stemming you know the other side of things so you know various things we probably won't talk about here uh you do that and in yeah. during that yes you could you could kill two birds with one stone yeah. for lack yeah. of a better term but yeah so yeah there's they're, they're sorry very short answer uh, yeah they're allowing it to happen because they don't they don't care yeah i mean um i mean i see you, you mentioned yeah um obviously the the, the pandemic i mean i suppose yeah right. it, you know do you believe you know because obviously it wasn't long after it sort of you know began spreading and obviously becoming as big as it did um, and obviously the you, know, you, you many people sort of believe that it was engineered you know, yeah yeah, yeah. It, i've never uh, seen a crisis uniformly uniformly 
Well, whatever. It was that is that a word? The uh, where where it was accepted by all nations with such welcome arms and using yeah. the same verbiage. You know, it, everyone was on the same page. Remember the narrative, right? The yeah. na everyone was on the same page. It's like here's it, yes, this is obviously a problem. Here's the only way to take care of it. Everyone must do this. Like, okay. Um, you know, and, and it's done and it's done in record time. And again, I'm a big believer in writing and it's like, wow, you guys, the, the, the time frame that everything, everything was happening, the beats were so fast to where there were a lot of people, even non-conspiracy people that were like, so does anyone else think this is suspicious in the slightest? Yeah. And so there's, but they kept, kept people guessing. But yeah, I mean, you know, we've we've lost people in our community, and I've lost family members, and uh, for various reasons, though. Not, I mean, it, I mean, the you know, it was a two-stroke thing, meaning there were people that that died from certain things. There were people that died, f what looked to be like from the the direct treatment, and there were people that died from you know possibly the shot in the arm, and uh, you know the combination of those things. It seemed like an overarching theme. It's, I do, did. I think it was the the end game. No, 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 no. I, I never thought it was the end game. I thought it was more of a, a softening of the target. Um, yeah. The the thing that I've been focusing on uh, on my channel for the last well six months at least. Well, not about six months. If it's been that long, has been eventually you're going to have to distract everybody from that with a with a um, a military conflict, a big one, mm -hmm. a really really big one. Yeah. And come on, they, they've been painting. This one has yeah. been a long time in the making, which is, yeah. you know, uh, you know, who's the bad guys? Well, obviously, it's going to be these guys over here with the red flag. Oh, here's another red flag over there. And, uh, you know, and then Europe in the middle and then America trying to guide things from. But it's yeah. it's been a chaotic mess. Uh, we'll see, you know, how I mean, that's a whole nother set of conspiracies where. Russia has not been going for the um, uh, initial bait. Come on, they 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 know war about as well as yeah. anyone. These guys have been doing this a long time. So, and by the way, you want to look up some fun stuff. Look up how quickly after those Russian ships were blown up that that uh, that fireworks depot next to your Air Force base blew up as like it did. And, and they just kind of downplayed that and then immediately came afterwards and said, oh, yeah, by the way, when Boris said, oh, we're also training Ukrainians up here. It's like, wait, you're, yeah. you're flying Ukrainians to the UK to train them and you don't think the Russians are going to figure that out? You know, seriously, it's like it's like, can you imagine right in a base in Moscow? It's like eh, Ukrainian cell phone outside London. <laughs> Right. And it's like fire missile, <laughs> you know, and, and, and that's it. And because, again, you can't report it. You can't say you, yeah. there's no way you could say, oh, yeah, by the way, a Russian missile blew up a, a little training compound yeah. outside of a outside of an RAF RAF base, because yeah. if you did, you'd have to explain, which is why the, right afterwards you would have to say, well, why are they blowing up? You know, and Ukrainians died, right? It's like, why would Ukrainians yeah. even be here? Which is why it was a yeah. one-off <laughs> where the, Boris had to say, oh yeah, we're training people here. Uh -huh. Basically past tense. We were training yeah. people here, but they were dumb enough to use their freaking cell phones. Whatever. <laughs> anyway, sorry, I'm, I'm all over the map. <laughs> Uh, I mean, um, kind of going back, I mean, I suppose, yeah, um, obviously, if you believe, um, yeah, that obviously COVID was, uh, was manufactured or whatever, sure. um, would it be fair to say, uh, of course, the vaccines are probably, you know, even more, you know, uh, of the sort of oh, yeah. target. For yeah, 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 I, and um, I, I won't go into it too much in detail, but, uh, yeah, there, I, I have way too many instances of, of, um. I mean, again, immediate family members who, who had to deal with all, well, the ones that survived anyway, had to deal with all sorts of issues. And it, again, it goes into, again, I'm not trying to be dark when I say this, it goes into a narrative. If I was going to do this, right? If someone came to me yeah. in, in an Illuminati meeting, saying it's like, all right, yeah. what do you got? What do you got for some ideas? It's like, well, <laughs> stage one, I would do this. And stage two, I would do this. Now, stage one and two, they're not the end all be all but they're certainly going yeah. to help your cause. 
And then eventually you're going to have to have um, all of Europe launch a thing against Russia eventually. And by the way, that's going, that's going yeah. to happen because, um, because Russia was, was very smart in that they didn't take the bait. By the way, when, when is you, have you ever seen that? When Russian ships get blown up, by the way, by SAS. Yeah. SAS did all of that. That's why Russia, Russia's... Did you see the graphic they ran on that television show where yeah. they, they they wiped out the yeah. whole UK? Yeah, that was the strangest. Yeah, and then they so strange. and then they yeah. took it out. It's like, oh yeah, not only that, but we have a tidal wave weapon that can hit you from the yeah. west, and we'll just wipe you out that way. It's like what? And and you're thinking, why are you picking on UK? It's like yeah. it's like because yeah. SAS has been doing so much damage down there, and and Russia knows this. They're like. Uh, SAS put put them at top of list, you know they they they, they want them. Uh, but anyway, so so yes, uh, the the everything about the pandemic has been uh, pretty much what I would expect. It it's been so. I I take it you're not. Vaccinated. Oh my God, no, 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 no. I I I am not. Uh, for for various various reasons. Uh, but no, no, there's no way I would, even, even if I wasn't a conspiracy guy, I'd be one of those people that would be, um, that I, that would say, let's wait and see. And because I've watched so many people around me deal with stuff, yeah. I mean, good Lord, the examples I could give you. Um, the thing is what was, was amazing to me was how many different aspects the, 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 the shot got, you know, hit you with. You know, um, yeah. there was so many, so I mean, I mean, come on, my, my uncle's right now is on more, more blood thinner than I think actual blood. Um, yes. my, my aunt, the same, but I mean, there was an ex-girlfriend. I remember, uh, she called me months ago. Uh, we were going to, we were going to have coffee. Right. And she goes, Oh no, I, I can't. I go, why not? She goes, well, I can't go out in public right now. I go, why not? She goes, well, I have jaundice. And I go, oh. what the hell? And, and she goes, yeah, she goes, yeah. she goes, my, my liver's failing. And I'm going, what I go and then of course it occurred to me I go, did you get the shot recently? She goes, yeah, about three <laughs> about three weeks ago. Why? And I'm going, oh, good. Just and I mean though and those those were fairly light. I mean there was others that that yeah. have not been fun. So no, nobody in in our community nobody has volunteered. I mean I'm not kidding you. It it has been very the hard line has been drawn there. Um, yeah. yeah. And so the only ones, the other, but the flip side of that is if you, um, you know, there's only one protocol. In fact, we've been telling people, it's like, look, unless you have like just a broken arm or a leg, don't go to the hospital for anything. Because the, yeah. the protocol is you go in and they, if you have a respiratory issue, I mean, I can't hear, there's only one protocol. And that is, oh yeah, we'll, we'll put you in a coma and we'll, we'll throw some remdesivir at you. And that's a terrible idea. I mean, it's, it's, you know, putting anyone in a, in a coma, especially if you, if you walk in the door with a respiratory issue, um, the, the leading side effects of medically induced coma is pneumonia and it's, it's just horrible, yeah. awful, awful, awful. So we have lost, we have lost multiple people that way in our community. And it's mostly because of denial, you know, uh, which is, you know, it's so weird watching, you know, it's been almost a psychological seminar watching, watching all this where, like something will happen like a, one guy will, you know medical coma he's dead right and we yeah. know all the details and where it's like look you know it, you, you know do the poster don't let this happen to you right and then it happens to another guy right and and it's like wait i know for a fact you knew this guy right why did you go in yeah. and the reason is because everyone you know denial it's like well it probably won't happen to me Right? It's like, yeah. I know what happened to those people and it happened to these people and all these other people. Yeah. I've been watching videos on it for three months, but I have this cough and I'll be fine, right? Yeah. And yeah. you get there and I hear the same stories all the time. The doctor's like, yeah, we want to put you in a coma. And and people, I mean, there's some people that run, which is good. It's like, sorry, fine, they, they, they leave. And I've yet to run into somebody that, you know, that died of a respiratory issue at their house. But the others, you know, they, they just keep hammering at them all the time, which is, you know, they, they say, yeah. you know, so anyway, hope does that kind of clear up the, the stance? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But <laughs> yeah. yeah, everybody in our community, everyone is, you know, the if they're going to go down, they're not going to go down because of uh, the shot. No offense to yeah. whatever you're doing. I don't even want to know. 
uh, I mean, uh, sort of speaking of the community, I mean, uh, obviously, um, as I mentioned earlier, you know, it's interesting that, yeah, just, you know, 10 years ago, this was, you know, it was not saying that, I'm not saying it didn't exist, but it wasn't really something that was was mentioned at all, but I mean, or much. Um, but I mean, how do you see, you know, the Flat Earth movement uh, community uh, sort of progressing in another 10 years? You know, do you think you're going to be sort of even more widespread? Do you think within the next 10 years, um, there'll be something that kind of convinces the more wider world? I mean, where, where do you see the Flat Earth movement in, in bad day? Well, okay, it's an interesting question, because if things progressed without the reset moving forward, oh yeah, we'd be everywhere. Um, there was a yeah. reason why they they stunted us as, as as when they did. You know, from 2015 through 2018, 2015, all of 2016, 2017, uh, and then going into 2018, we were running unopposed. The, they, we were promoted <clears throat> on, on YouTube just shamelessly. And yeah. we were everywhere. I mean, to, again, to the point where I was, I did in 2019, I did conferences in seven countries. It was crazy. Yeah. I mean, we were, we were all over the place. I mean, I did a commercial in Australia. It's like a, <laughs> for a, for a phone, uh, television commercial for a phone app down there, you know, because the owners were, were flat earthers, you know, it was so weird because it, the, 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 the campaign was called foolproof, you know, get it. It's like, well, if any, if Mark can, you know, can learn our app, anyone can, it was a gambling app because gambling's completely legal in the entire country of Australia. Yeah. And it's also a big gambling problem in Australia, as you can imagine. <laughs> so, but, but the point was, is that, uh, when I was down there, I was the only, um, uh, I was the only non-actor in the campaign. Right. And I was walking around, I was looking at the call sheet and I'm going, I was the only one without an agent. And I was going, yeah, <laughs> why am I here? Exactly. I go, you could have somebody pretend to be me, right. You know, for, for pennies on the dollar. And they yeah. said, no, no, the owners wanted to meet you. I was like, Oh, okay. Um, so if everything was, 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 you know, if we aren't, if you just go back to 2019 and you ask me that question, I'd be like, oh, yeah, we're unstoppable. You know, 90% of our communities in the closet. We've got celebs all over the place that just won't come out until more celebs come out. Uh, we were we were doing just wonderful. I mean, you know, it, because the, the topic wasn't offensive enough to people to where they wanted it stopped. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's all sorts of topics that are controversial. But this one was very, no one could figure out, is it dangerous? Is it, what, what could it do? Um, yeah. However, now that we are where we are right now in 2022, uh, I don't even look forward 10 years because the, the speed of, of how things are progressing, even though I think some of the stuff in Europe is happening in slow motion, you wait till this winter. Um, when Russia strangleholds most of um, Eastern Europe with energy stuff, uh, it's going to change. Yeah. It'll be a game changer. And I, I do firmly believe, look, I, I love Flat Earth. And I think, you know, yeah, if, if the world was, was back in 2019, I think we there's nothing we couldn't do. I mean, I've got magazine covers over there from, from 2019. Yeah. It's like we couldn't do anything wrong. But for whatever reason, uh, they're, they're playing for keeps now. They, they want this to happen. Yeah. How it's going to exactly shake out, I'm not sure. I do know that the core of Europe, not you guys, you know, because you're out on an island, um, but the core of Europe is going to is going to change forever here pretty pretty soon because they're they're going to force everybody's hand. I mean, Germany can't freeze during the winter, you know. Their industries aren't yeah. going to shut down. France is going to isn't going to accept it. All these countries aren't going to accept it. Um, and and if, and Russia Russia is reluctantly being drug into this. And what China's role is going to play, I don't know. But between the three yeah. of them, let's put it this way. And again, I don't want to be. Uh, too pessimistic but between those three the, the big three you know u.s and china and russia they can make a terrible mess of things be, yeah. before it's over you just feel lucky that you are where you are yeah. because britain you know yeah. they you seriously you guys are in a spot where you know there's a reason why germany didn't never did a land invasion on on you guys in world yeah. war ii and it's because geographically you are where you are the rest of europe oh no <laughs> <laughs> yeah no i mean yeah i'm i you know much as i have not not slightly pessimistic views about my, my country and the way it's governed yeah i'm thankful that yeah i'm not in yeah um, there are way I mean, yeah, there are way not, worse places to be than uh, in fact yeah, i if i had yeah. to choose between being in england and like being in canada 
I'd still be in England because Canada Canada is way too close to the U.S. I mean, Canada, yeah. you know, the, I lived in Canada for a year, and uh, the only other countries, you know, again, part of the crown, New Zealand. New Zealand is a wonderful place, absolutely beautiful place. I'd, you know, if I if the U.S. cracked in half, New Zealand is where I'd want to go. Um, however. The New Zealand could, I think, be taken over by like five ships and a thousand men. <laughs> There's nothing there. Yeah. It's a pretty place, but it's like not exactly, you know, unless you got the um, the elves to help or or part, yeah. uh, you know, part of the Shire. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure. You, you, you just want to live like in yeah, one of the nice little valleys, pretend you're on yeah. A, and, for a yeah. Oh, I went. Like, by the way, I went I to like. that. I went to the. Uh, you know, that is their biggest. Oh, New Zealand is so weird. They, that is their biggest tourist attraction is the freaking Shire, which is in the middle of this <laughs> is in the great. middle of this sheep that's farm, great. and they built it back. They tore it down after yeah. the first three movies because there were people that kept showing up to to shoot their own little impromptu movies. <laughs> and then after the Hobbit trilogy, they built it back up and turned it into a permanent thing. To where now there are tour buses. There's a tour group that goes through literally every 15 minutes. Every 15 wow, minutes yeah. just, from internationally, from all over the places. Just groups that go through the frickin' Shire and end at, yeah. the, at the tavern and you get a drink and, and take all your oh, pictures. Wow, it's wild. But that is, yeah, that's, that's, that's the biggest tourist attraction in, in the country. When it, when it all goes wrong, everywhere, that, that, that's the place to Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> no, go. no, there's, yeah, there's some, like, some great things. But again, phone. don't Stay here. don't feel bad about Britain. Britain is, is still, uh, you know, they're, they're, sur yeah, yeah. they're survivors more, more than more than most. Yeah. So. But, I mean, yeah, it's, it's interesting, obviously, yeah, that you mentioned, obviously, um, yeah. yeah, Russia and energy and all that, because, I mean, yeah, yeah, you know, one of the big things is kind of, led to even more civil unrest here is you know how much energy prices have gone sky oh good lord about four. oh yeah and then and in october you know they're, they're meant to go even further and it's like yeah you know it's, it's sort of like yeah you sort of wonder this winter yeah when, well what's gonna happen on the on the national and the there there will scale, be civil yeah. unrest no question uh um the the poor neighborhoods will get hit first and what i try to remind people i go I go, don't forget, there are poor countries in the world. You know, it, it's yeah. a global, it, global, the, in the world community, uh, the poor country, you know, Africa's, I don't even know what the hell to do with Africa. They're screwed. Yeah. Uh, but there's all sorts of countries out there that, um, that won't do as well. Um, the NATO countries will, will fare better. But again, we'll have to see how, how it shakes out and, and how everybody makes their moves. Don't forget, the, the whole Taiwan thing hasn't even happened yet. That's just that, yeah, that's, true. that's yeah. waiting in the wings, yeah. and that's yeah. that's yeah, that's not gonna that's not gonna play out well. Even though uh -huh. it doesn't make sense, but it's like you know, it, again, it's it's American expansion that we paint in a different light, right? It's like we have we yeah. have no stake in freaking Taiwan. We never did, right? It's it's <laughs> China's land, right? It's always been their land. It's like, but we set up some manufacturing there, and now it's like, oh no, we should defend those poor Taiwanese people. It's like. <laughs> No, we don't care. That's why the, the Ukrainian thing probably playing better over where you are. Um, over here, we don't care. We we, we just don't. Uh, yeah, the Americans yeah. are are so self centered that way that there's an old saying which is like, does whatever's happening is it going to change the price of beer? Then who the hell yeah. cares? <laughs> we don't. And by the way, yeah, it, uh, will it change the price of our really horrible beer? No. <laughs> Oh, yeah, and uh, in, in the UK, yeah, whenever when you know Russia first, <clears throat> you know, invaded Ukraine, yeah, it's, it's it's massive, you know. I mean, even just I mean, I live in a a, a fairly small town, a fairly you know out in the country, and um, yeah, the amount of houses you pass that have got you know the blue and, and, and yellow flags, and it's yeah, it's totally different, I imagine, from where you are. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. And by the way, not, not, yeah. I knew you guys were going to be in trouble because oh crap, I knew you guys were going to be in trouble. Of the strong stance you took with Ukraine, the fact that the UK yeah. seemed to care more than others. You know, it's like, oh, we're we're gonna yeah. commit to everything. It's like, why why in the hell would you care? Yeah. Why <laughs> yeah. why why would you make such a stink? UK, what stake do they have in Ukraine? And then of course you look at the backstory, and it's like, no, we that was our big. It was us basically daring Russia 
you know, we were, we were, we, people forget that after the Soviet Union broke up 20 years ago, we grabbed every country, everybody became free agents, right? So we grabbed yeah. every country we could, except for the ones that bordered Russia. And they were like, should we, should we try to go for one of those? Yeah, it won't be easy. Okay, who do we go for? Ukraine. Okay, let's do that. So we worked on them, we worked on them, we worked on them. We almost had them. And Russia's like, yeah, that's not happening. <laughs> and they yeah. just came in and, and, and hammered on it. And now, again, don't forget about, uh, and this is way closer to you, um, don't forget about Finland. Because when that happens, remember, they share an 800-mile border, right? When that yeah. happens, if people, yeah. people forget, you, you, like, you pull up a map and you look at Helsinki and you back up just a couple clicks, you'll, St. Petersburg is right there. Right? And I've got, a, yeah. I've got a military friend who said, he goes, you wait. He goes, if, they, if that actually happens, he goes, the ships in St. Petersburg, the, the military ships won't even leave port. It's that close. Yeah. They'll just fire yeah. from, they'll be, yeah. they'll be docked and they'll fire. And, the, and, and, you know, Finland, other than Helsinki, there's not really much there. Right. I mean, you could drive there from St. Petersburg and I think like three hours. It's that it's that close. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, there's all sorts of fun scenarios that are, that are going to play out. Yeah. So but for you, again, just be grateful that Britain is. Yeah, it's yeah. its own. Yeah, yeah, you could. Yeah, you're not Spain. You're not France. You're, you're not uh, you're not anyone. You're, you're definitely not Germany or Poland. <laughs> Or, yeah. or chat. Oh, you, there's all sorts of places you don't want to be. You guys are you guys are in pretty good shape. Not that again, no, no offense. Not that Russia's forgotten about you, obviously. But yeah. because because and I'm I'm dying to find out. This is like really. Do you really have a tidal wave weapon? Do you really think that you're going to be able to do that? Because that would be horrible. Uh, I got I got a few more okay. questions. Uh, just before we go on, uh, I think your your video. I, I I don't know if your video's working. I'm oh, just getting there. really? Uh, I think it, I think it was. It might have been when you put something in the chat. I don't know if that disrupted it. How about now? I'm just, I'm just getting the. Uh, no, it's, I'm just getting the. Uh, don't, know. don't know. I mean, it's not the end of the world if not. All right. still well, your as long voice, as the audio is working, because I see the video yeah. on my yeah. side. Yeah. Yeah. Um. But, uh, but yeah, anyway, um, All right, so, uh, just a couple more points. Um, so, I mean, if you, I mean, because I assume as one of the kind of, I, I, I don't know how you like to refer to it, one, one of the figureheads, would that be correct to say? Of the, of the uh, I, I, I call myself the freshman recruiter, but, uh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I've been doing this more than most, sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I, I assume you've had presumably quite a few offers to go to the Antarctic or maybe even have you ever, ever had people sort of say like, Oh, we'll send you up and see what the, you know, cause it, there, yeah, Antar there have been on, there have been some television production teams that have won that, that have been swimming around for years that have wanted to do that. And they, um, I, I don't blame them for, for trying. I'm going to, by the way, I'm going to, kill my camera see if it makes any difference so when i did that does it just say mark Sargent, or has anything changed um it just yeah, yeah it, i i just get the um i don't know we put like uh, your avatar oh that's good that's good at least uh, it's just the avatar okay yeah I'll, I'll try to turn it on just before i leave the um just see if anything changes um yeah there's been some offers yeah no no question but most of the time when it comes to production uh everything falls through not not for anything on our side i will usually try to talk producers out of antarctica because from a filming standpoint there's not much to look at you know you you yeah. when you're out there it's like whoa it's a cameraman's yeah. nightmare i mean it's like all white yeah. there's no depth perception it's awful so well, i usually try to talk them into places like um bolivia the salar del uni the salt flats out there which which I'd still love to go, but I haven't gone. Um, as far as the space thing is, it's funny you mention that because only the British production teams have offered to um, you know to do like a fundraiser to get me to to go up to the the ISS, yeah. but but nobody's done it. I mean, I kind of that surprises me because I mean I feel like you know it's quite a how sort of cynical uh you know the internet is the internet always loves like oh let's prove yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, i'm kind of surprised you'd that, think you think so however i do believe the the powers that be have realized that i wouldn't go for the 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 carrot and the stick isn't going to usually isn't going to work with me 
like it like it yeah. did with like Joe Rogan, where you can't bribe me and you can't really threaten me because mm-hmm. why would I do it? You know, it, yeah. it, and and you can't take me up for real. Because what you're going to do is you're going to make me sign a non-disclosure agreement and you're going to say, yeah. you know, and it'll be just like space cadets where it's like, doesn't matter what you see, you, t- you yeah. tell people like you were th- that you were in space and that would shoot the whole thing down. No one would believe me anyway, even if even if uh, I did. But I would I would try to tell people if I got the chance to go up, would I go up? Yeah, you bet I would. But no one's ever going to yeah. ask me. Uh, because yeah. there's nothing, there's nothing to take me up to. Uh, it's the same sort of reason why you never took up Neil deGrasse Tyson, you never took up Brian Cox, you never took yeah. up uh, ne- uh, Elon Musk, and Elon Musk owns yeah. a freaking space company, and he didn't, he hasn't <laughs> gone up. Come on, uh, you just don't do it. Um, but but yeah, if I ever got the chance, sure, I'd love to go. In fact, I you know people don't believe me, but I, I said, look, I'd quit this thing. Love to. I get, that was the whole point. The whole point of this seven years ago was, was like, look, I go, just answer the question for me. If, if somebody can sh- blow away flat earth, I'll quit. I'll walk away. I'll go back to a normal life. But no, yeah. but no one ever yeah. did. So I was, I just kept getting stuck doing this and just over yeah. and over and over. And, and more and more people jumped on the bandwagon. It's like, yeah, you know, I, and I, I get, I appreciate it. But at the same time, uh, it is a little bit irritating sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 but, but yeah, I'd love, I'd space thing. Sure. Love to absolutely love to. Uh, and hell, I haven't even gotten a threat yet. You know, you'd think that like NASA would call me up and, yeah. and say, all right, here's what we want to yeah. do. Cause if you want to get rid of me, you know, the way you'd want to do it again, if I was going to write it, you put me in a rocket and then, well, you don't actually put me in a rocket. You, you blow up the rocket, then you take care of me somewhere else. Yeah. And then that's it. It's like, oh, poor Mark. That the, then pe- yeah. the conspiracy people would think that I was, t- you know, removed from the equation. And, yeah. Yeah. Well, so, well, I mean, and and sort of, you know, part of that because again, it's um, I mean, I mean, obviously, as you just said, yeah, you're you're perfectly willing to, you know, if, oh, there's, yeah. if there's evidence or whatever. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I I say know, yes. Again, I say yes to almost everything. Why why wouldn't I? Are you kidding? A free trip to you know because the publicity around it would be mo- massive. Yeah. <laughs> uh, however, eventually you still got to do it. And yeah. you know, unless, unless you have a way of faking it mission impossible style that I won't see through which, and yeah. it's like, look, I know all the tricks. It's like, okay, if you put me in a bus that all the windows blacked out, you drive me for a while, yeah. <laughs> you know, I don't know where we are. And if I have to be put to sleep for a little bit, well, that's not going to work. You know, there's, there's all sorts of things that, uh, that, you know, I, I know I, I'm a big, huge fan of, of media. So I yeah. know the power of illusion and I know what you can get away with, but there are certain things you can't. And, uh, and maybe that's it. Maybe they just realize it wouldn't be, it'd be too much trouble. Why even try? Why even take Mark? Yeah. I, I, yeah. I wouldn't do it. I mean, I mean, what, what would it... <laughs> So, I mean, what would it sort of take for you to, I mean... Oh, to re- know, renounce my uh, my beliefs? Yeah, I mean, in, you know, because, again, there's always this preconception that, obviously, I know you are very open-minded, but there's always this preconception that whatever someone does, right. you could just sort of, you know, or conspiracy theorists can just sort of say, oh, well, that's not, you know, that, that, that's not true. So it's like, what would it, you know, if you know what I mean, what kind of thing would it actually take for you to, would it be... Yeah, yeah, there's, know, there's two things that you could do. Um, uh, the first would be um and it wouldn't even have to involve me directly you know it's this for the entire community the first thing i would do is uh i would ask for uh 4k camera footage and eh, whatever we we're up to i think it's 4k um you put a 4k camera on the capsule of a rocket facing down towards the towards the the cap the command center and you let that rocket go you don't put it on stage two or stage three you make it to where whatever is going to leave uh, orbit is going to go it's never happened by the way in the history of space travel and you let that camera run you do not edit it you do not splice it you let that sucker go and you let us analyze the footage and you know to where this thing's going far enough to where the earth starts you know turning into a globe in front of our in front of our eyes yeah. you know something that like didn't happen with the uh, the elon musk uh convertible in space you know the the roadster in space that yeah. that was just that was so much that was some of the most brilliant misdirection and everyone everyone fell for it in fact including me for a few seconds which was they followed the boosters back down to to nasa 
you know, the booster one, booster two, and landed right next to each other because that would happen. You'd never land those boosters right next to each other. And then they, and I could almost hear the producers in my head. It was like, and cut to car. And there it was, yeah. the car and its profile, these three beautiful cameras on it, you know, facing all these different directions. I'm going, wait, how'd the car get there? I go, where's the where's yeah. the Falcon Heavy? Where's the, the, the big thing that, that dropped the car off, which we spinning slowly behind it in the background? And it's like it was never there. I'm going, where the hell is it? And it's because they, they didn't want to put it in the lair. They, they didn't want to deal with it. It was too tricky. So, uh, again, and the impossible car that should have blown up in all those those different directions. So, I mean, it's... Yeah, I mean, it, 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 it's it, it's one of those things, isn't it? Where you sort of, I mean, even I sort of think, um, you know, yeah, why why don't NASA? No, they're not stupid. They they see that flat Earth is becoming, you know, more and more popular. Right. Um, and yeah, you sort of think, why don't they just stick a camera on the bottom of? I mean, that, that can't oh yeah be yeah 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 why, why for NASA that can't be that big a, a thing to sort of prepare to make happen. Why don't they just do that? Release it. It would look great for people who already you know believe that you know the Earth is round, and for those that don't, it would be you know the kind of what shows. So, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah. You know, by the way, you know the other things that didn't happen on that Roadster on that Tesla thing in space. Um, one was there were no logos on the car. You know, you've got SpaceX and you've got tesla right yeah. and there isn't a single sticker on that car that thing should have been covered yeah. like like a yeah. like a formula one yeah. racer um yeah it so. and it yeah. wasn't and not only that but since it's the only car ever in space there wasn't a single poster in any tesla dealership ever showing that i mean that's your banner yeah. right there for all your all your things but the, the the other thing was not only that the branding you know first you didn't even use the uh, the flagship model which is the S model you know the, the big four door sedan you used the the, the two seater uh, uh, convertible but the you know with the four seater oh my god I mean think of the marketing things you could have done with that I mean, you could have yeah. you could have sold the whole thing to Disney um, you could have put uh, stormtrooper in the driver's seat Boba Fett Groot <laughs> and Iron Man. In the back seat, that thing would have paid for itself, and it would have been the most wonderful marketing tool ever. And yet, even though, you know, this has been a few years since this thing, no other car company has even attempted to put a car in space? What the yeah. hell? And then, you know, and then shortly after that, it's like, oh, yeah, Elon Musk, by the way, is the richest man in the world. It's like, w wait, how? How exactly? It's like, yeah. it's like it, it didn't, again, I know economics. It's like... I, everyone knew that Bill Gates was the richest man, publicly richest man in the world, because everybody owned Microsoft products. Everybody owned freaking Microsoft products, right? And then you knew that Jeff Bezos was the richest guy in the world because everybody has freaking Amazon, yeah. right? Yeah. And then all of a sudden, this guy just jumps past both of those guys. And it's like, oh yeah, yeah, Elon's the richest man in the world. I'm going, what are you talking about? I, <laughs> I, I see, yeah. I see Priuses every hour of every day. I see Teslas every so often, but it's like yeah. you're telling me so many people sunk money into Tesla stock, the government, that the, the Tesla stock has become so expensive that now he's now the richest man in the world. It's like, whatever. It's just, again, yeah. people, they, and, and the general public, what pissed me off more than anything, I put this in my last book. I, I said, look, he's not Tony Stark. He's not. Yeah. <laughs> Why are you, why does everyone, hell, my brother-in-law, the same thing. It's like, oh, he's a genius. I'm going, how, how do you say this? It's like, he's done nothing. He didn't invent PayPal. He didn't invent Tesla motors. I mean, yes, he had the government help when it came to SpaceX and, a, and then a solar company. It's like, why, why do people keep, and it's like, and, and yes, he was an Iron Man too, for like 10 seconds. Yeah. You know, yeah. Tony Stark <laughs> walks by for 10 seconds. Like, that's why. That's why it's like, come on, he's just oh. it drives me insane. Sort of, uh, sort of talking about, um, you know, the kind of conspiracy and how it, um, you know, goes even to like the kind of uh, small level, I guess. Um, I was watching a, um, uh, a Tom Scott video yesterday on YouTube, and um, he did a, a video about um, it wasn't anything to do with it, it was to do with um, bridges and the corrosion of uh, cables in, in bridges and he was looking at um i think it's the the humber bridge uh, in the uk and it was when it was made it was the longest i think uh freestanding suspension bridge or something. right um and he was mentioning how um you know the colossal towers on either side <laughs> he was mentioning that you know it's so such a long bridge um that the tops of the towers you know this bridge were you know supposedly a couple of centimeters further apart 
than the bottom because of you know right, the curvature right. of the earth and stuff like that. And suppose you know just sort of looking at you know how this kind of you know, theory you know and the effects of it kind of go down even into relatively small levels. Yeah. What would be your sort of answer to that? Would it be that, you know, when they were designing it, they deliberately made a slight, you know, in order to make it look... Or not, it... maybe not even deliberately, maybe accidentally. Uh, because there yeah. are plenty of structures out there that we have looked at. I mean, the the bridge is one thing, or, I don't know, the Suez Canal, or the, the Roman aqueducts. How the hell did the Roman aqueducts happen? You know, if, if they yeah. didn't know the curvature formula, and, and even if they did, how the hell would you apply it in, back in the day? How did the water yeah. the water yeah. run the way it did? Um, so, no, when it comes to structures like that, it's like, oh, yeah, you, you might measure it. It might be a couple centimeters. Although, truth be told, if it is a, a, a very, very large distance apart, it wouldn't be just a couple centimeters. Get to remember, the, the, the curvature yeah. formula is eight, is 8 inches per mile squared. So that's mm -hmm. 8 inches per mile per mile, which means that... Uh, sorry, I know it's ringing. Um, uh inches per mile per mile, which means that 50 miles, there's 1,700 feet of curvature, right? How, how far yeah. apart was this bridge? How, how far was apart with these towers? Do you remember? Uh, I don't remember off the top of my head, no, but it was, um, I mean, it wasn't, I don't think it was quite, I'd, I'd probably guess like a half mile. Oh, okay, it's not, that's so, not I mean, that bad. It wasn't I mean, huge, there are huge amounts of, of curvature that, when you get to distances, again, 40, 50 miles, and so on and so on, that we're just not seeing. The, the reason why, yeah. I don't want to draw this out because you already know some of this. The biggest game changer for us was the um, uh, HD technology when it came to cameras, mm -hmm. which what, ha you know, if you went back 20 years ago, you know, you could have a $3,000 camera on your shoulder. You could zoom in on something on the distance. The resolution just wouldn't be good enough. It'd still be this fuzzy little blob mm -hmm. and you wouldn't you'd be able to say anything. But you can have a, a $600 camera now that you can zoom in on things that are 40 miles uh, in the distance which you should yeah. not be able to see meaning when you crank your when 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 you're looking out in the distance it's gone whatever you've seen is gone it's yeah. like the boat the, the lighthouse is like well it's obviously over the curvature really crank the zoom up now it's back in frame and it's yeah. like okay how much refraction do you need because people that's the only example people get is refraction but i've got some wonderful videos which show horizon lines behind the objects that that you should be covered by you know by the yeah. curvature and that, that by far was the biggest hook for um, uh, most of the people that get, got in the community was long distance photography. I never even mentioned it during the clues, for yeah. example. I never once, because I didn't have any idea. It's like, you know, back in 2015, it's like, wait, I, didn't, I wasn't even sure of the exact shape. And then people kept calling me out. It's like, kept, kept saying, oh, yeah, by the way, it's tabletop flat. I go, really? How do you know? It's like, because I've been shooting this lighthouse, you know, over this body of yeah. water. I'm going... You're down at the beach? It's like, what are you doing down there? It's like, yeah, because yeah. water lays perfectly flat. I'm going, huh, I didn't know that. And people, and people, you know, because water is easy to get to. And so people were just kept running down to the beach with all these cameras all the time. I'm just making hundreds, if not thousands of videos along, along those lines. And the, the consensus was, it's like, well, we can't find it. In fact, the, the challenge that yeah. I put, and I, again, I don't want to drag this out, um, the challenge that I put to science was show me an object of, I don't know, less than 120 miles away. Cause you know, cause there's a thickness to the atmosphere, which is so, which, which you can't pull into frame. You know, obviously you can't, you're never going to be able to see Cuba from Florida. You're not gonna be able to do that. And, and, but again, the, people don't understand physics when, when people come back and say, why can't you see Japan from California? Why can't you see London from New York? And why can't you see, or New or England from New York? And why can't you see Mount Everest from everywhere? Because it's the highest place on earth. And I go, because you're not breathing in nothing. I go, people forget that yeah. what you're breathing in is only 99% transparent. I go, and that gets compounded over time. It's why, you know, whales underwater can only be seen, you know, out to a few hundred yards. It's because of the thickness of the water. Yeah. Same thing with the air. You know, you get out around 100 miles and that air gets really, really thick. Compared, you know, compared to, the, to, to, you know, something that's really, really close. I don't know where I was going with that. <laughs> uh, but no, it was, it was just something I remembered. I, I just thought, yeah, it's sort of, yeah, it, it's it's it, you know, it's a very sort of, yeah, fascinating yeah. thing. I mean, um, but uh, but I think that's uh, about the end of my uh, about about the end of my oh, questions. Cool. But I mean, uh, yeah, it was uh, yeah, it's been sort of very interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> sort of um, it, and uh, <clears throat> um, if there's again, I think there's sort of. If there's any other resources you need, uh, you know, just let me know. I can, if I don't know where they are, I can point you to people that that specialize in them. 
So. Yeah, well, thank you. Um, I mean, I, I plan to, um, yeah, sort of write up. Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, if, if, try not. I, I try not to do because um, I interviewed um, a guy called uh, <clears throat> Darren Shan, who's uh, an author for. What was his name? Uh, da- Darren Shan. Oh, okay. Uh, who's like uh, uh, he does like a lot of um he's like he's like an author this was for again the online magazine but was more to books um uh and one thing i wanted to take away from that was not just write like a transcript because they're okay for like you know interviews when you sort of read them you know so i always try and sort of make it a bit more not prose as such but you know it's not literally just question involved right and, uh, so it's sort of nicer to read um <clears throat> but yeah i'll try and sort of write that in the next uh, couple of weeks but if there's anything you know any sort of resources or anything that i need for the clarification or whatever um yeah you know i might chuck you an email or yeah by, okay. by all means uh, and if you need any other uk resources <clears throat> also let me know because you've got some some great people over there so yeah yeah thank you yeah. Uh, i really appreciate yeah. it um but yeah and uh, hopefully it, it, it comes out as it's interesting but it was it was very nice meeting you yeah nice to meet you uh, and because uh, <clears throat> I know that I uh, came up with the uh, yeah I watched this video James Buckley years ago um, and then I don't even remember it's probably my fault I don't even remember why it, it, it didn't happen and then literally a couple of weeks ago um, I, I don't know what it was job my memory and I was like oh hey uh, I wonder if Mark Sargent's still up for, for having a chat sometime. sure uh, so yeah it was it was and you know who knows you know if, if, if there's other you know enough stuff that needs clarification or if the piece does really well whatever. You know, can always set up another interview at some point as well. If you know, if if, if you're up for it, but, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But if so, that's, yeah. So thank you very much for, for sort of agreeing to this interview, and it's uh, it's been very nice having a big chat and learning about you know, um, yeah, sort of what you believe. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And, and, yeah. I, I know, I know, I hit you with a lot of stuff, but uh, you know, it's just my style. So, but uh, no, it's. I mean, I'm exactly. You know, I'm excited to say I'm always. Uh, my, my my ex would always have to get had to sort of put up with so much. You know, I'd ramble about something, and then that means I'd have to ramble about this. It's be pinballing, to right? It. So I totally get it. and it's um. But it's it's all interesting. So I mean, yeah, it's genuinely sort of you know, yeah, yeah, sort of interesting seeing um you know because again yeah. You know, first question i asked a lot of people just put it down to oh flat earth. but it's like when you get into it it's like no no there's a lot more oh yeah than yeah, yeah 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 and when you go down the rabbit hole it's very interesting yeah, yeah so, I agree. Um, um but yeah it's, it's, it's been about two and a half hours now so i'll let you all go right it's about um about half is it half half two over there yeah so yeah it's it's uh two two twenty right now yeah, it's just more dark. All right. <laughs> well, anyway, yo, know, thank you, yeah. thank you, and again, if you need anything else, don't hesitate to ask, and uh, I will maybe talk to you in the future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Thank you very right. much. Have Thanks a good one. Okay. See ya. Okay, you too. Bye. Bye.